Hi, welcome. I'm Tom, your host, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast Interview Edition. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop, and you can find us under at DropMacOfficial. We do reviews, news, and interviews that all have to do with the film business. And today, we will talk to the one and only, the colorful Matt Taylor, and we will chat about his way to AMP stardom, different field of works, and what art goes up in his home. So stay tuned and head over to our Instagram profile at DropMacOfficial to follow along with the art we are talking about or check us out on YouTube for the video version. So now let's get started. Matt, welcome, man. Hey, Tom, how's it going? It's been a pleasure. I um, I have you on for a second time. So now this is the full interview one, I promise. And I promise already in the release yeah. edition that will be because we are recording uh, a week early. And um, this this uh, I'm going to announce to people that, that you're going to be on the show. So next week. So I think people will get very excited. Um, nice. Yeah, we talked back in the summer, didn't we? About yeah, Palm Springs. It was four. Yeah, four months ago. It said on. It said on Skype. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, it feels like sort of yesterday and also a million years ago. Right. Time. Time flies yeah. by so fast. It's like crazy. Like you know, I yeah. I remember when we all got in lockdown, and then mm-hmm. and it feels like basically like yesterday, and now we're all in a lockdown again. So <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing much has changed. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so I always start out the, the podcast with picking three pieces of art that I really love uh, that you did. And um, I want you to tell me a little bit something about like a little bit of a process okay. and like the ideas where it come from and stuff like that. And sure, sure. Um, since since you already talked about Palm Springs, which was my favorite art piece of yours, I, I have it up in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so that's uh, that's that's out of that's out of question today. <laughs> but um, the first one I want to talk about is your very beautiful Aladdin piece. Oh, okay. That was a really cool one. I I had that because um, like I did when the movie came out for the life the life action uh, movie. Um, I mm-hmm. had it um, that I, I was at the at the premiere here in Berlin, and Will Smith and all like the actors were there, and. Um, Mm-hmm. I, I I was doing social media for the for the cinema. Uh, um, okay. and I was like running around, t- talk to all the cool guys, got some cool uh, stuff. And I like, uh, f- for example, there was one video with Alan Menken, and uh, I asked him what what um, what uh, a Disney princess he would be, and he answered Quasimodo. So uh, that, that that's the Disney princess he would be. <laughs> it was fun. Okay. And um, <laughs> yeah, and I had like as a background for my phone, I had your Aladdin. Um, poster as a wallpaper and yeah and i showed it to a bunch of people and they all really loved it and uh yeah let, let's hear how this how this happened um so aladdin that one was the uh the mondo disney show i can't remember if it was the second the first or the mm-hmm. second one that they did um but yeah so mitch uh mitch got in touch with me i think it was kind of the tail end of 20 oh 24 15, so it's been a minute, huh? <laughs> um, it was after I'd done the Inforama show uh, with yeah. them. So I was sort of starting to become a bit more of the Mondo family. Um, I'd done a few posters for them and like they were just throwing loads of awesome stuff my way. And they said, you know, do you want to do you want to take part in this Disney show? Give us your sort of like top three Disney movies that you want to do a poster for. Um, and so I, I picked out Aladdin and the Lion King was my other piece mm-hmm. of that one. I can't remember what my third choice was. Okay. Might be might be Mulan, um, but anyway, I I kind of said I'd like to do these. Was it Jungle Book? The Disney by movies. the way, was it Jungle Book? I think uh, I remember Jungle Book, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, no, you know what? I think Jungle Book was from the first show because okay. I remember Ollie did the Jungle oh, Book, okay. um, and I don't think that was the show I was in. So I'm pretty sure the one I was yeah. in was like the okay. second Disney poster show. Um, but yeah, so I I kind of threw those out because they were the Disney movies that I remember seeing when I was kind of a kid. So um, Aladdin was, I think, 92, 94, or maybe 92. Maybe you're right. Between. Okay. It was somewhere around then. So I would have been like 12, between 12 and 14. Um, So I went, I saw them at the theaters and, um, you know, and they to me sort of were like the Disney movies, which just stuck Mm. for whatever reason. Um, I think by the time, like Pocahontas and Milan and the later ones I'd sort of yeah. grown out of Disney a bit. Um, and before that, like I remember seeing stuff like the, uh, the Black Cauldron and the Rescuers mm. um, when I was much younger, but you know, for whatever reason, those kind of middle Disney. Yeah. Ones, nine, 90s, um, 90s the, Disney the are really good stuff. So, 
Yeah, I mean, that's the thing as well. It's like, it's not a controversial or unusual yeah. opinion to say, you know, Beauty and the Beast through um, Lion King were like top-notch Disney because it's, you know, it's it's received yeah. everyone. Is, um, by the way, is, um, is, is Aladdin your favorite Disney film or what would you say is? Ooh, um, I'd go Lion King, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lion King of classic Disney. Um, I have a soft spot for the Jungle Book, but I think everyone does just because it's so beautiful and the songs are so good. Mm -hmm. um, modern Disney, I really like Zootopia or Zootropolis. Mm -hmm. It had two different names. It was something else in the US. That, that one really, yeah, well, uh, yeah. really stood out to me. Um, oh, Moana. <laughs> I absolutely love Moana. Um, oh, and uh, Lilo and Stitch Frozen? as well. Um, I've watched... You know what? I prefer Frozen 2. Okay, okay. You're, you're one of those, okay. Really, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went to see uh, I went to see Frozen 2 with my mm -hmm. daughter when it came out. And I, for whatever reason, I just... I think the songs are better. Okay. And I think it's a much prettier looking <sighs> film. It, it, it looks better, I think so too. I think it, it goes it goes along with your color schemes. <laughs> for your posters, definitely. Yes, yeah, it does. It does. I'd really like to do a Frozen 2 yeah. poster at some point. Um, mainly just like for my daughter, mm -hmm. but... Um, actually, no. If we come back to like my favorite movie, I think I'm going to say Lilo and Stitch. Okay. Because it's so goofy so, and so um, like atypical yeah. for Disney. I Is think. It, are you excited about? Because uh, I just I just had like a news podcast. I do like a weekly news podcast on film and TV news, uh -huh. and they just announced that it's going to be a live action movie of Lilo and Stitch, and I was like really against it. Really. But what are your thoughts huh, on that? I, yeah, I'm. I'm I don't know. I have a kind of mixed feelings mm -hmm. about the live action Disney movies because I don't think there has been one yet which sort of justifies his existence. Yeah. Um, Kenneth Branagh's Cinderella was good, but then Cinderella's kind of classic fairy tale. So I don't think that one relied mm -hmm. as much on the original Disney. For, for me, the, um, for but, me, the only one that, I, that stuck out was Aladdin because they tried something different and it worked. And I think that is um, was like the... the the, the the best of the for, for me at least the best of the live action remakes yeah i think so i mean i say yeah yeah um i'm waiting for it to come around on disney plus and i'll check it out then um mm. december yeah, like, december right today even the lion king you know was looked great in the trailers and then you watched it and it was just this sort of weird uncanny valley where they didn't look enough like animals to be animals but they didn't have yeah. the kind of um the sort of i i just more extreme expressions you know yeah that, yeah exactly cartoony. exactly it just and, all looks a bit dead-eyed yeah i i know what you're saying it's exactly the point they, they look too much they were more like an actual animal and they didn't have the yeah. overdrawn cartoon way and i think that that was missing from the film for me and especially that they didn't do anything about it like I, I, yeah it looked beautiful of course it does but uh The, the movie, the, the, there was nothing new to the story. The story was basically the same. And yeah. um, then I can watch like a better cartoon version, I guess. Yeah, and it's a real shame because they had such a great like roll call of talent in it. Mm. Um, I think that was the most frustrating thing. I think actually the talent involved probably saved it from being mm. a lot worse. Because like yeah. whatever you say about it, it's got Beyonce and Donald Glover. That's going to be good just because they are excellent performers. And exactly, they sing yeah. brilliantly, so it's going to sound amazing. Um, yeah. And actually, Beyonce songs for it were were pretty on point. So you know, I think that kind of gave it like an extra half star in my book. Um, but Lilo yeah. Stitch, like, I can sort of see that working. Mm -hmm. um, let's, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'm interested. Let's see how uh, how would you fantasy cast? Oh, the Lilo movie. Stitch. Yeah, you know what? Honestly. I have no idea, um, partly because I'm not, off the top of my head, I can't think of a huge number of, like, indigenous Hawaiian the, actors. The Rock, is, the Rock is gonna be the uh, the security guard dude. Okay, yeah, 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 that works for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. Um, I think it's one of those things, they need to cast it really well. Mm -hmm. I think almost, like, not unknowns, but someone who you don't have like a prior association with. I mean, I guess, you know, The Rock is going to be the big name, but it I, it needs to have like a Hawaiian cast, I think, for it, because yeah. that sort of feels so integral to the movie. I would so. also, yeah, I would also go if they cannot, uh, if they cannot do Hawaiian, like Taika Waititi, this kind of crowd, because he has, a, 
indigenous people uh, mm -hmm. of New Zealand in it, and Maori. Yeah, I know. I feel like Hawaii is so sort of like tied to that movie. That's um, true. That's definitely true. I mean, yeah, it's, it's I, gonna be an interesting one. I just like, hope. I hope just they're not gonna do the Descendants or whatever it's called with George Clooney and like all the all white people in there. And ooh, no, no. <laughs> and there was that uh, that Cameron Crowe movie with yeah. um, Emma Stone. Hey, yeah, exactly. Um, that that's the one that I was oh. actually talking about. Yeah. But oh, yeah. no, that was awful. Yeah, that was awful. an awful bit of casting. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I will remain optimistic about that. Okay. What are yeah, we talking we... about? Oh, Aladdin. <laughs> yeah, Aladdin. Aladdin. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> we can we can drift off that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you answer you answered the most important question about that one. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's um, it's well, it's a great piece. I just have to say it's like really incredible. I was gonna say the the Aladdin poster also, um, along with uh, Lion King, were kind of quite important for me as as an artist because. So I went to my first MondoCon. Um, I think it was MondoCon three, and I. I went to that convention feeling a bit like overconfident about myself mm -hmm. and thinking that I was like all that. Yeah. And there's nothing like being in a convention hall with the best artists who work in the same field as you to, to mm -hmm. kind of put you in your place a little bit. And Is that scary? Yeah, it really was. Um, you know, I was next to Kevin. I had Kevin Tong on one side. Oh, me, okay. And I had um, Tegan and Erica on the other mm -hmm. and I was opposite. Uh, DK and G and John Burton was like just over there mm -hmm. and that Draplin was just there and so I was surrounded on all sides by people who I considered to be amazing yeah. and it, I think also that was the that was the convention I did the Escape from New York poster which I know people like and I don't want to um, try and diminish their enjoyment of that piece but that mm -hmm. was a poster that I felt I phoned in that mm -hmm. I didn't do as good a job with it as I could have done and so coming off the back of that poster, which I was not super proud of, and a convention where I really sort of felt my place in the pecking order. Mm. Um, also, that was the year that Rory did that amazing graduate poster. Oh, that, that was the year? Oh, yeah, that's, that's oh, an yeah. incredible poster. I, 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 um, unfortunately, I don't have the poster, but I have the, the, the 4K Blu-ray mm -hmm. cover sheet that is at yeah. least something. <laughs> But like, so I saw that, that graduate poster like displayed next to my um, Escape from New York. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, John Burton's um, Rosemary's Baby, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's I just incredible. Felt, I, I felt, yeah, I felt my work was not, I don't want to say not good enough, but not as good as it could be. Okay. So I was very sort of conscious of wanting to make better posters mm. and so the next job that i got through mondo was um aladdin and lion king mm -hmm. um and I, th I have a feeling i was starting on guardians of the galaxy at the same time as well okay I, think I was working on those three concurrently yeah was by the way and, was it ariel because you have also an ariel post a little mermaid oh yes yeah I, the one i did last year yeah um that was i, I basically i did that because my daughter loves the oh mermaid. okay okay and and cyclops said do you want to do the little mermaid oh, okay, so okay, okay, cool. I, it's it's one of um two bits of my oh no three bits of my own art i have up in my house mm -hmm. um i have my my uh brick poster because um brian and joseph gordon levitt and um no Stephen signed it it's a great so, piece, yeah. Yeah, so that's hanging up. Um, I've got a piece that I did for the Scoob movie, um, which the director... From this framed. year, right? Yeah, yeah. So I did the... Um, in fact, Mondo released a poster of it this, just this last week. Yeah, exactly. It was just It, it is on the release podcast that it's going to come out yeah. tonight, so basically a week ago from, from the people that <laughs> will hear it then. Yeah, so I, I have a version of that um, hanging up in my house. But a different is, version than the, the ones you made, or...? Yeah, because it's the so the one I, I have hanging up is the actual illustration that I did ah, for okay. the animation. Um, so it's got a few extra cast members in there. Things are moved around. It doesn't have the title on it. Yeah, um, how, how big is it then? Is it still twenty four by twenty six? It's, uh, it's uh, two point three five to one, so it's widescreen ratio. Okay, cool. Um, it's about it's about like this big. Okay, um, it's, yeah. it's just there. Oh, I see. I, I can see it. <laughs> uh, the the people the it. people cannot see it though, but you yeah, would have to I move it. But we're just gonna like leave it. Circle. Yeah. like here so it's yeah. just out of frame yeah exactly um, anyway so the director of the movie um tony he wrote me a little note and he had like a framed version of that done for me so i've got that hanging up because it was, it was oh, quite that's cool project. but then the third piece i have hanging up is my little mermaid which is outside my daughter's room because she loves it mm -hmm. um, um yeah that's, that's so yeah so aladdin i i was just i wanted to make a poster that was as good as it could be 
Mm-hmm. So I, it's it, that one's always going to be pretty important to me because I don't think I do anything differently on it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm really even now I'm really happy with that and Lion King. Yeah. They just they they're about as good as I think so. <laughs> It's incredible. I think with the, all the like the um, the the patterns of the of the lamp or, and like the like those tile kind of you know uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. patterns, I I think that just looks amazing and the colors are incredible. And having the city of uh, a city on there, the the flying carpet, the genie on the top. That's I. It's just just very very great poster. We really, you know, at the time um, we we talked. I think Rob and I talked about doing a variant um, with Jafar. Okay in place of the genie so like yeah. an evil version just couldn't get it to look right oh, okay <laughs> just couldn't get it to look right at all which is a real shame because that would have been a kick-ass variant but yeah we definitely tried it but i just it didn't it didn't feel quite right and couldn't get the colors to work on it so okay that one's Interesting. yeah one of those great lost posters okay yeah that's that's also another book idea there lost posters <laughs> <laughs> every, every every artist has got those those yep. sketches that didn't get approved or you know the ideas that you never quite follow through on Yeah, that would, that would, I think that would be very interesting for a lot of people to see, to, to have that. Yeah, get, you know what, though, getting the rights to, to print, because like a lot of cases, I think they were, Even like, though, projects were abandoned for a reason. Yeah, okay, true. But uh, in terms of licensing, shouldn't it be, it, 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 wouldn't it be considered fan art? Or is it that if, if you sketch it for a project that is licensed, yeah. is it under NDA or what? what how is that? Maybe, you know what? Yeah, I think it would depend on the project. Um, because if you've got a likeness of someone in there, you okay. still need to get approval to, to print that likeness. Um, okay. And I'm trying to think, like I've just... So, but then I, I have... Know, I, I've, I, just I, a, I've just done a project I can't talk about <laughs> at all. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> um, okay, so I've done a project that I can't talk about at all, and I did a piece of work for it, which isn't going to be used, basically. Okay. Um, hopefully I can share it at some point in the next year. Mm-hmm. But like I, I spoke to the AD on it, and I was like, "Can I post this like when the rest of it goes live?" And yeah. it's like, "We're not sure." Okay, interesting. And it was, you know, because it's it's a piece of work that's completely finished, and it's not going to be used because it was it was being put together as part of a pitch with like mm-hmm. a ton of other work, and yeah. you know, my my illustration didn't get used, which is fine. Um, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Yeah, but happens, yeah. even even with all of that, I still might not actually ever be able to share it because of the, yeah. the NDA, the kind of licensing with the end client who it's for. Yeah, that's that's what I figured probably. If you do it for like a pitch project, they basically buy all the, uh, they, they like pay, they paid you, so they bought like all the stuff you did. And if they use it, mm-hmm. it's up to them. So yeah, that's the problem yeah. here. But like, I, I wonder, do they buy the idea in terms of, you know, if you like would recreate it like, just as a sketch form, you know? um you know what i don't know uh, because like in the end it's like fan art you can do whatever you want if it's a one of one and it's not oh well, let's say we're not going to print it but we're just going to put it in uh on a podcast no making no money out of this yeah i think putting it like displaying it out of context like um you know the mondo talk panels mm-hmm. where they they show all of the great yeah. um unused sketches and stuff mm-hmm. because that's a sort of uh, but the thing is they often say you know don't photograph this don't put it out online and i think that's the only way that they're allowed to show it yeah because as soon as it's like out there in the world that you know if i if i go to google and i type in i don't know um aladdin film poster mm-hmm. it will show you know the one sheet the teaser but then like my poster will come up on there and also um a whole bunch of other yeah Fan art, and at that point, it then becomes difficult to differentiate between what is official, what is kind of licensed art like mine, what is fan art. Um, and I think, I, I mean, again, I, I don't really know because I don't, I don't know like the inner workings and the machinations of what goes on in the studio. Mm-hmm. But you know, if if you have said to someone you can't put this out for whatever reason, you know, be it that they're not happy with it or because they don't have a likeness or something, and then it is out there on the web. Mm-hmm. It's pretty. Even if you say, "Well, I'm just putting this out as fan art now," it's still out there. So it feels like you're crossing a line where they've said you can't do. You know, yeah, it's got, at a certain point. Yeah, I, I can't do this. It's like there's a client in the end. I mean, you you mess up with the client, yeah. then they're going to hire you. It's totally understandable. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm always wary. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to annoy clients. Of course not. It's one of the reasons I've I've never done any 
uh, private commission posters mm -hmm. because I, 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 I was working on something for 20th Century Fox and I, I got chatting with the AD about mm -hmm. unlicensed posters. And like, he was a fan because like he was a poster collector. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't work at Fox. He worked for a studio that worked with Fox. Mm -hmm. But he also told me that some people higher up um, were not keen on them and that, you know, artists have been not selected for a project because they'd done unlicensed stuff for the property and especially they had been profiting off it. Mm. Um, so, so for me, yeah, it it's... always has that impact. Having said that, I have actually just said yes to doing a private commission. Okay. Just one. <laughs> I'm doing one because the commissioner kind of caught me. Uh, well, the commissioners, I like, I know the commissioner like socially, but he kind of caught me at a time and said, do you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> okay, um, okay, I so, see. So there is going to be one out there, but I can't talk about what it is. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're going to cut, we're going to cut the talk short here because I want to know. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, that's that's all really cool stuff, and that's like really interesting. I I, I wonder also if like because I because I know actually some other artists who do like tribute posters. They create stuff um, like actual posters. For example, I have in a release podcast I had last week for uh, from SG Posters. She did a tribute poster oh, from yeah. Mank, which mm -hmm. looks really really cool. And uh, I I wonder sometimes. If, how, how could the studio or somebody like be mad at that, you know? This... I don't think they could. I think, I think when it crosses the line is when someone's profiting directly from it. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone is essentially is selling it, um, you know, it's the same as me drawing, I was going to say drawing like a superhero and selling it, but then superheroes are kind of a slightly gray area because you have lots of, um, I think superheroes with, with like comic conventions, people yeah. will sell illustrations of, and I think they kind of give a pass to it because these are the creators who are making their, um, their artists successful. Like say Chris Samney did these amazing black and white, um, uh, Batober he does every mm. year. He does like 31 amazing black and white drawings yeah. of Batman and they're not licensed. They're not official, mm. but they're kind of one off originals. And he's, I think their eBay auctions are up at the moment, um, which are only available to the U S otherwise be trying to buy one because they're, yeah. they're incredible illustrations. I, I, I but, wonder though, for example, um, the artists do the sketches. They the, the sketches they sell though. For example, Greg Roos does it. Yeah, I think Dolly Dolly think, just did it. Again, I think as their originals, mm -hmm. they. I, I don't think they're again. I don't think they're like technically allowed to. Okay, but I think because they're originals, they're um, they sort of they don't count as much. Yeah. Um, and like we were saying about um, SG posters, I mean, that's essentially what I did when I started out, which mm -hmm. is you're creating a piece of work for your portfolio. Exactly. So when I was, you know, when I was like 23, 24, and I was trying to like put my book together so I could show people, um, like I really wanted to make book covers, but uh, no one was hiring me to do book covers. And mm -hmm. my agent at the time said, people will hire you to, to do a thing if you can show that you can do it. Yeah. So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to pick like three books that I've read this year and I'm going to make like what I would do as a book cover. Mm. And I did that and I put them on the website and that led to work. Exactly. So, yeah. so, so that's kind of like what SG is doing that, you know, they've seen or they've had an idea for Mank and they thought, oh, this will make a cool visual. And so you do it and you put it online and, you know, you're not saying this is an official poster. Yeah. You're not selling prints of it. Nope. So it's just, here's something for my portfolio. And, you know, you hope then that a studio or an art director will mm -hmm. see it and think, oh, I like the way this person thinks. Maybe okay. Maybe yeah. I should ask them to, to, to do something. Exactly. So, yeah. So we're going to we're gonna do a podcast episode then. Like all the, where all the artists come on, show their lost sketches. That would be, that would yeah, be cool yeah. to see. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. But yeah, definitely one uh, of the sketches that are not lost are uh, the ones for your beautiful Kalita Humphreys Theater poster for the Frank Lloyd Wright oh. season one show. That was that was a really piece. That was a really beautiful piece. It was a. Um, that was actually the first time I uh, went to a gallery that oh, okay. that had poster this this kind of poster that I'm collecting. And it was in New York last uh, last year, 2019, yeah, when yeah. when the first show came out, and uh, I bought all of like I think five or six posters. I bought like right on the spot at, at Ken uh, Harmon's place at mm -hmm. the Hashimoto Contemporary. Yeah. 
So that was like really, really great that I could like actually see them in person and like, uh, like this kind of way. It's like incredible feel. But uh, how did this happen? How did you get into the show? And how do they? I mean, it's spoke art, so they know about you as a poster artist. Yeah, but yeah, I've I've been working with spoke art for a few years now. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. The first piece I did for them might have been Lost in Translation. Yeah, which was 20. Ooh, yikes! Twenty fourteen. Does let me? I think I have it somewhere. There it is. Yeah, I, I pull it up. I'm talking people. to you on my phone. I can't get because normally I'd be like looking at my laptop at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I pulled um, it up. I pulled it up. First, I think, at least the poster. But it, I, I thought I it's going to say on it, but it doesn't. I think it was like twenty twenty fourteen or fifteen. Twenty fifteen, I think actually. Um, so because twenty fourteen, nope. I did it's a twenty eight. Twenty eighteen, I think it is. It says 2018. Oh, no, that was the second one. Oh, the second so one. I okay, okay. Oh, I did not know. Yeah. Oh, so it was 2018, so it was 20... It would have been 2017, because I sort of had a, a slight running joke that I tend to do a Lost in Translation post yeah. every two to three okay, years. Okay, cool. So, so you're like, touch wood, I'll do another one next year. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've like I've I've been doing work with Spoke for a for a while. I've done a few few prints for them. Um, I was in one of their gallery shows a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, Ken just reached out when when the Frank Lloyd Wright exhibition was um, was in its early stages and asked me if I wanted to do it. And it sounded fun, so I said yes. That's pretty much how I, I choose projects. <laughs> that, that's a that's a good choice. How, how are you like like it's an ar architecture piece in the end. It's about the architecture in this mm -hmm. case, and you have done different work from music to um, like U.S. Open. You did something for the U.S. Open, I think mm -hmm. it was, and uh, other like other areas of um, where artwork or illustration is needed. Um, yeah. How how did architecture factor in for you? Was it was it hard? Was it something different? Like in what kind of way did it challenge you? It was, you know, um, I haven't really done anything architecture based up until that point. And, and in part, that was why I wanted to do it, because it was something different I hadn't ever been asked to do before. Um, and it, it presents like a different, different set of challenges, I guess, from like figurative work. You, you've always got the figure as a sort of central, mm. central focus that you're um, that you're trying to like draw the eye to or that you're kind of building the piece out from. Um, with architecture, you're dealing with something big, you know, and you sort of then have to think, okay, well, how do I want to frame this within the image? Do I want it to be purely about the architecture or do I want it pulled back so that it's the architecture within the environment that it's in? Or trying to like strike a balance between these two. And for the, the Kalita Humphreys Theatre, I was really taken by the kind of stark, brutal nature of the, the shapes. And I just mm. wanted to... I just wanted to focus on that. I mean, there's there's nothing really in that poster that isn't the building, mm. apart from like a bit of a tree. Yeah. Because I just wanted that to be the, the focus. But then that presents its own problems because you sort of have to think, okay, well, what do I want to draw the eye to mm -hmm. like within this building? Because you can't just like, just draw a bunch of stuff because it's like, where does the eye, how does the eye like read across the page? And so... I think that was why I sort of put a bit of like foliage in there. So it's like a sort of central point that you kind mm -hmm. of look at and then it kind of draws out from there. And I was quite careful with using things like the the way that I framed like a little bit of sky rather than just, I think if I'd had the sky across the whole thing, it would have just felt too flat. But I think by putting in like just like a strip, it then again it's kind of draws the eye in, but it also accentuates the... Um, The, the building, the sort of, of like the structures mm -hmm. and the forms. Is, is there about. is there like a building out like behind it? Or I thought it was just going to be just just going to leave the negative space there in because there's a building. So, but you don't want to give it a structure. No, no? there's oh, just okay. sky. There's just sky behind okay. it. Um, I just I, I felt like I needed to frame it somehow. Okay, interesting. Yeah, not just have it. Yeah, it was it was quite a conscious choice. I, also, in part, it was. Um, sort of late late 50s 60s illustration makes really good use of sort of block color to define mm -hmm. an area or like having a, a um, like a negative space cut mm -hmm. out of a block of color and that's something that I, I've used a little bit and that I quite like um, uh, probably not so much in recent times because my work has just been like fill yeah. every single like inch of the page with detail but I I really like being able to leave like in fact Palm Springs is a pretty good case because there is that sort of white Error at the bottom, mm -hmm. like, and I, I, I miss 
having big areas and negative space, which was something that I felt was in, used to be in quite a lot of my art, and I've definitely lost in the last few years in a like demented challenge to like fill every inch of the <laughs> poster with withdrawing yeah when you look at the avengers posters or like the marvel you know ones was you you definitely feel everything yeah, <laughs> i know they, those posts have broken my brain like now i just think right just throw more at it more art more characters mm -hmm. and and yeah that um the the front line right piece was a real was like a really nice change Great. of pace like it's quite simple did you, i think in terms of the did structure. you see the person did you did you go to the theater or no i wasn't able to um I, I chose that one because it was in Dallas and I mentioned the last podcast I well last year I spent in um, and so it was kind of in the back of my mind that maybe I could take a trip up to Dallas and, and see it but honestly there was there was enough resources online that okay. I was able to just get tons of photos sort of from the time and contemporary and sort of figure out what aspects of the mm -hmm. building I wanted to I wanted to draw. Is, is it is it different in a case of like you know you have references obviously on movie posters mm -hmm. and you do maybe uh, uh, like some tracing for certain things or whatever but mm -hmm. is it is it different when you created this one or is it the same kind of process on the basis yeah pretty much pretty much I was uh, I was quite aware of having to sort of trace bits of it to get the proportions and dimensions like mm -hmm. exactly right i think i think what i did for this one was i built a collage up of about three or four different photos of the same sort of aspect of the building mm -hmm. and it, it's not like 100 accurate like i think the, the roof is slightly shorter in one area than it should be but i sort of did it for like aesthetically it was more pleasing yeah. to, to have that bit a bit shorter so I kind of cut and pasted the photos together. Like often, um, like this is like a slight digression. If I'm drawing a, a person, like I'll build a little photo collage up mm -hmm. of, uh, of how I want them to look. And, and often it'll be like, okay, well, I need, I want to make the arm a bit longer, even though it shouldn't be because like aesthetically it looks a bit better. Mm -hmm. um, you look at someone like Rich Kelly's work, yeah. you know, the proportions on Rich Kelly's work constantly blow my mind because they're not like, correct in the traditional sense of the the term but they look right um and i think that's something that I, i can't do that anywhere near as well as rich can because he just seems to have like a sixth sense when it comes to knowing how to make a proportion look completely wrong but also utterly amazing mm. um but it's something that i do with with figure work and, and with this with the um the Polita humphreys piece as well it was it was sort of in my mind i had to just like tweak it to make like the lines just like line up accurately in a mm. way they don't in real life. But I felt like I want the edge of this to run flush. Yeah. Into, yeah, yeah. You know, totally get it. It's, it's a lovely piece. And luckily that's uh, or not luckily, uh, but 20, that's a 24 by 36 inch piece. And mm -hmm. this year there was only one piece that had that size. Mm -hmm. So it's like really, because I think that that makes for a good reason never to take yours off because I have like <laughs> my, 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 my wall over there is, uh, it's like an architecture wall. I only have architecture stuff on there. Go, going from, okay. from the landscape from Pablo Oliveira, uh, for his, mm -hmm. for, for the pyramid, the Blade Runner pieces. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, have, uh, Ang uh, I think it's Englert. Yeah. Uh, the, the spider verse one. And yes. uh, Rory Kurtz is up there with the Talzine. Then the uh, oh, such a beautiful piece. Uh, Ghost Co. with the Sturges House. Then I got mm -hmm. Dury Yuri up there with the Guggenheim, and uh, the, the perfectly fitting in terms of uh, architecture style. I got the Guggenheim next to yours because they had the, the 24 by 36 pieces. So that's and they had that same kind of like rounded. Exactly, exactly. I was so disappointed not to be able to take part this year, which was entirely my own fault. Like, mm. Ken was emailing me up until the week before, just saying, have you had time to do a piece? I was like, um, unfortunately, other work got in the way, and I just, I wasn't able to. But I hope if they keep, if they do the, if they do another Frank Lloyd show that I'll be able to contribute again, because it was, it was a really fun piece to yeah. work on. And I, I feel like I learned so much last time mm -hmm. that i want to do it better next time so i really want to take another swing at it yeah but it's very problematic because i bought too much <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay maybe for your wallet it's better if there isn't another one yeah yeah please i was i i have like as i said i have five from the first show and i think the second one i got six Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean that's a lovely collection though. it is it is <laughs> and and finally i can uh, can change at least a little bit and make it like have left the wall like have something new to it like like i do with this one 
you know, I had, yeah. I had, I had, because I, I had the the vice press open channel last weekend. Uh, was last weekend or the weekend before? I think last weekend on the fourteenth. Yeah. Um, yeah, last weekend. I uh, I I switched it out, but I I used to have like your your beautiful pants labyrinth labyrinth piece up in the oh, middle. Yeah, so yeah, that was up last time we spoke. Yeah, so that was that was really a really uh, great uh, to to have that. And no, it was it wasn't last. No, 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 it wasn't last up last time because I didn't had it then. I just got it. Oh. I just yeah. got it with the with the house of um, the, the house and power of X um, print. Yes, yeah, I remember from your story. There was something up there. I'm trying to remember what PC had up there. I'll just go. I'll go back and watch the video. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but the thing is that um, I think I bought the last one on it. I think people because the the last labyrinth uh, one um, because. I had it up and people were like, oh, that's a great piece. Where did you get it? And I was like, yeah, it was still up at Matt's store. So go over there. And then everybody was like, it's not there anymore. <laughs> oh, you know what? I have still got some. So the reason it's not up at the moment is, okay. um, oh, God, this is complicated. So <laughs> uh, you know I'm doing the baseball cards at the moment. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so those are being primarily sold to um, American customers. So mm. I'm pricing them in dollars just because it, it makes it slightly easier to, uh, okay. to sell. Mm -hmm. And because uh, the rest of my posters are priced up in pounds, mm -hmm. I've had to take them down because you can't have like two currencies oh, okay. on the website as well. So, And also because a lot of people are coming to my website specifically to buy those um, cards. Those cards. And, yeah. Oh, God, this is, this is so boring. But I, I do the fulfillment for the baseball cards myself. Um, and the posters, uh, Ben, um, who runs Uniquely Geekly, uh, mm -hmm. who does all my shipping and stuff, he handles all of that. Yeah. And Shout out to Ben on this. this yeah, time. Oh, yeah Ben's, Ben's the best. Yeah. I love Ben so much. He makes my job so much easier. Yeah, and you just, you guys, uh, speaking of that, you just guys released a Green Lantern piece, uh, which you yes. did for the anniversary, yeah, right? Last weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, so because I have orders for baseball cards, which are for me, and then posters, which are for Ben, when I have the cards on sale, I take all the posters down just to sort of stop there being oh, confusion okay. about what needs dealing with. So so it will go back up. Um, I'm kind of thinking about having a Black Friday sale okay, this cool. year. So it will probably go back up then. Um, I was mm -hmm. going through what I say I was. Ben went through all of my prints, which he's got. Mm -hmm. And it turns out we've got like a bunch of Captain Marvels and Black Panthers and Endgame. Um, That's nice. <laughs> like, yeah, like all the stuff that I had for MondoCon last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so MondoCon last year, all of my prints were, had basically been in Austin the whole year. So mm -hmm. I never took out copies for myself. And I usually try and grab a couple. Out. Yeah. When, when, um, is, when so is Black I'll, Friday, by the way? Is it the 26th? Oh, it's the, it's the online show. 27th? Yeah, I know, I know what it is, but when when oh, is it? Sorry. That's a good question. Next week, but it's I not, think. Yeah, it's not this week, right? No, it's not this week. Oh, it's next. Okay, maybe I won't do a Black Friday sale because I'm not sure I'll have time to sort it out. Anyway, yeah, I, I'm just because I just wanted to say, people, because the, the the podcast is going to come out next week, so physically it would be people would hear about your Black Friday sale. So I'm just making sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I, I'm going to walk that back. But. That's that's a good call because make it a Christmas sale because then people would have money again. Yeah, good point. Um, I will have copies of Pan's Labyrinth back up, and I have got some copies of archive stuff which I'm going to put back up as well because uh, I'm running out of space. I've got a whole Great. bunch upstairs that I need to get rid of because my my box file is just getting like. Yeah, I, I get you. I get you my out. address. So. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, um, yeah. So the last piece I wanted to talk about is a little bit different. It is um, the one I mentioned already. It's a U.S. Open piece, and I picked the, the the Roger Federer one. But I want to talk about the illustration for that because I think there are not posters, right? No, they well, kind of, kind of. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, with that, so that was the one of the first jobs I got through my my agent, my mm -hmm. um, current U.S. agent. Um, Aaron, who's just the best dude in the whole world. Oh, shout out to Aaron. And yeah, oh, big shout out to Aaron. He's the best. I, I love Aaron so much. Uh, <laughs> he, again, he's, he's someone who makes my job an awful lot easier mm -hmm. because he handles all of the business side of things and I just get to draw. That's cool. Um, so, so yeah, he, um, he approached ESPN um, or a studio who were working with ESPN for the US Open and they like my work. And basically the... Um, 
the illustrations were printed out as big, big posters, which were displayed at Flushing Meadows during the event. Mm-hmm. But then also they recorded some video of these big posters and kind of cut it against footage of the players, mm-hmm. which became the TV promo. Oh, for, that's great. For the, so it was a kind of combination of like a big poster installation and then a TV advert as well. Um, I was working with um, a design studio uh, and also, this is terrible. Are you looking at it on my website? No, I'm, I'm, I, I grabbed uh, I grabbed one of the screens, but okay. should I look at your website? Um, I, we can do that. Yeah, can you? Because I want to I wanna get the name right of the artist who did all the, the background elements Hold well. up. I'll, I'll pull it up. Um, you keep talking, I'll pull it up while we talk. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so they, they tasked me with doing just big standalone illustrations of the... Um, of the four players. So it was, uh, Federer, Djokovic, uh, Williams, Nasaka, and they kind of supplied images that, that they kind of felt were right. Because if you watch the, the, um, the video that they did of it, mm-hmm. uh, they cut quite clean between images of the players and then sort of video running off it from almost the same kind of poses. So it moves really nicely. Um, it was a super fun project because I just, I didn't have to worry about the sort of design aspect of it. Mm-hmm. It was it was just straight up draw these players like looking dynamic and cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I think with these with those ones, I I don't usually have sort of like outline strokes on things, mm-hmm. but I think I think I knew because they were going to be printed big and, and yeah, the they have, they're murals. Cool. They're murals. That's uh... Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, essentially. Um, I just felt they needed some sort of like edges to them to make them feel quite mm-hmm. sort of yeah. uh, I, like encapsulated. Yeah, I just showed the video, so you could know. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was really it was a very fast turnaround project. I think I only worked on it for like four or five days. Okay. Uh, start to finish, and and then like a week later, it was it was out there in the world as a, a TV ad and, and posters, and I, I think that was one of the pieces that led to my um, tops uh, baseball cards. Oh, okay, cool. Because um, I'd not really done anything with sports up until that point, mm. um, and I'm pretty sure tops saw that work, and I think that's what that's one of the things that led to. I obviously I saw my other work as well, but it kind of showed that I could do like representations of athletes. Mm but also have them feel a bit like dynamic um, and like sort of not too sort of static and flat. Yeah. Um, it's not yeah, just it a was, photo. It's not just a photo in the end. Yeah, exactly. Um, it was, it was fun. Um, again, like, like I say, the big takeaway is that I, I tend to just say yes to things which sound fun. And hmm. yeah, that, that was. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that sounds very cool. Yeah. Did, did you know if the, the players saw it? Like if they like actually, you know, seen your I artwork? Mean, I'm not sure. I, I assume so. I mean, it was it was up as like big posters at Flushing Meadows, mm-hmm. so it's entirely possible. Um, I don't think they would have had to sign off approvals on stuff like that because it was mm-hmm. it was ESPN who were like the end client at the end of the day. So yeah. as long as they were happy with it, you know, that's that's all sort of well and good. So yeah, I just I just I, wondered I if they know. wanted like at the house, like you know, hey, I, I need a poster of this. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. I mean, you know, all those guys have been drawn and illustrated and, you know, mm. on so many different things. Yeah. The- I, I won't sort of kid myself that, that they saw it in any way. But you never know. Like, I always find out, like, after the fact that someone's seen um, seen a piece of work. Like, so the Tron, uh, the Tron Soundtrack? album that I did yeah. for Mondo quite recently, I know that I think it was Michael Sheen and Jeff Bridges both requested copies like some copies of it. There you go. I mean, I, again, like, I don't know if that's like their people requesting them, so there's stuff for the archive, or it's mm-hmm. something that they personally request. But like, I get a bit of kick out of the fact that Jeff yeah. Bridges probably saw my artwork. Yeah, uh, but he he better get uh, well soon. I mean, yeah, you heard the news probably, right? No, he has cancer. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. He knows like it Bridges so. A lot. Oh well, yeah. I hope I hope he has a swift and speedy recovery. Yeah. But yeah, so that's all very cool stuff you did uh, so far. We we talked about very. It's like very interesting <laughs> to see that you go in so many different directions. I think that um, that speaks volumes for you as an artist and um, your talent. And uh, 
I I mean we we talked we talking like 45 minutes just about like those three pieces right yeah, now. Yeah, no, I'm but, aware that we're going long. It's it's all good, you know. The you're not gonna beat the record. The record is three hours, so. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's I did it with Mexi Funky, but he had like, I think we we stopped talking about art at some point. It was only like his stories. He he basically told stories the whole time. And he has he had so many great stories. But I'm I'm always mentioning this because one of my favorite stories is he worked at the Warner Brothers store, and mm -hmm. he was uh, in charge of like uh, like the 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 the, the single sketches when they did uh, Batman the animated series, like mm -hmm. um, the the that 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 were turned into a TV uh, into the TV show, like you know. Uh -huh. So you could buy basically some some of the scenes you know like that that oh, they had no done. Way. That's awesome. And you know who called him multiple times. And put on his Joker voice, Mark Hamill. Of course he did. That sounds exactly like the sort of thing he did. Yeah, yeah. He called it with his Joker voice, and, it's, and he 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 he's doing an impression of it uh, on the show, and it's like really great. Yeah. If if you have time, if you have three hours, or just want to listen to it because it's just so entertaining to listen to it, uh, it's it's really worth it. I can tell you. You know what? I probably will. I, I quite like um, podcasts where, or you know, YouTube videos or or podcasts which. Uh, um, don't necessarily have to look at you can just kind of yeah. listen to um just i have I, i quite often have that on when i'm drawing instead of musical tv mm -hmm. because i tend to get a bit distracted by tv i'll find myself just watching whatever i've got on instead yeah. of uh, instead of doing what i should be doing which is drawing <laughs> exactly i i i, I yeah. know i know the feeling so that's why i always listen to my because i'm i play fantasy fantasy football like uh, mm -hmm. like nfl football and uh, yeah so i i always listen to those podcasts and like That, that that helps me when I, when I'm cutting videos and doing stuff like that. So yeah, 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 for sure. Alrighty. Um. So, but I wanted to know about you. Uh, <laughs> getting into that. Okay. How how did you how did you start out? Um. As was your career? Where did you study? Um. How did it come that you are the poster artist that you are today? So I I studied advertising at university. Mm -hmm. Um. And it wasn't really the right subject for me which i realized pretty much immediately after graduating when mm -hmm. I, i discovered i i didn't want to i didn't want to work in advertising um it just it wasn't what, what it part wasn't of advertisement field. was it um i so i studied media advertising which is kind of tv at the time it was tv radio and uh press okay but so, are you more of like the, the like what what what, what does it entail like concepts or did you do yeah, actually drawings then or was it something else yeah, essentially i was training to be an art director oh okay um, mm -hmm. and i i didn't realize that at the time uh so when i i applied for the course um the the university had a good relationship with the art school i was at mm -hmm. and i didn't realize that illustration was a thing you could do um like so i i went towards graphic design because i kind of i knew i wanted to do something visual um and there, there felt like there were things that enough things that interested me mm -hmm. and, and also i could see like a job at the end of it like i knew yeah. you could be a graphic designer um and you could work in a design studio so that was sort of my my goal mm -hmm. um and i had advertising suggested to me and i at the time advertising felt pretty cool mm -hmm. because it was the it was the kind of late 90s so it was the era of like those great classic levi's ads yeah. and like the guinness surfers um And there were people like, you know, Ridley Scott had come through advertising mm -hmm. and uh, Jonathan Glazer yeah. and these lots of these kind of very cool, creative. Speaking directors. of Ridley Scott, did, did you see the Hennessy commercial he did? How did you like that one? Oh, sorry, you completely broke up. Oh, I broke up. I'm sorry. Voice. My bad. <laughs> I was like wondering, OK, okay. What, what happened? But I think it's probably my I think it's my Wi-Fi. It's OK. Um, so um, did you see the, the Ridley Scott Hennessy commercial? I think it was Hennessy. Uh, the one in the a desert one. it was very spacey oh yes that was yeah, it's great uh, it's, it's it's ridley scott i mean he's mm -hmm. um in fact we'll talk about ridley scott in a bit because sure alien uh, but yeah <laughs> um but yeah so i i was a bit kind of um i don't know fame hungry i guess like i, I loved the so mm -hmm. kind of like name directors and i love film as well so in my head i was kind of thinking wow these are directors and creatives that I like and they're doing this amazing, like cool work. So I, I just wanted to do a cool job. So I, I studied advertising and I think in my head, I wanted to be 
Jonathan Glazer or Ridley Scott and be the person who mm-hmm. was like making this art. And what I realized over the course of my degree was studying advertising is about coming up with the concepts. So you're not the person who realizes like, yeah. takes the photos and who does the drawing and who shoots the video. You're the person who comes up with the idea and then finds someone else to realize it. Mm. And I had that realization that I wanted to be the person realizing it more than the person coming up with mm. the idea, which isn't to say that I didn't enjoy coming up with the ideas. Like that was super fun as well. But I just more and more, I was thinking, I want to, I want to be the one actually making this. Mm. But, but yeah, now um, you got best of both worlds in the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, I'd love to do more art direction because like there have been a few times recently where I've seen films and I thought, oh, I, I'd love to do a poster for this movie, but I'm not the right person to do a poster for this movie. Okay. I was watching um, Roma. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I had an idea, and I've written it down somewhere, but I thought, oh, like, John Burton would absolutely kill this poster, mm-hmm. for example. And um, in fact, I talked with, I can't remember who it was I talked with a few years ago about, like, wanting to art direct a series of posters, because I can't remember if it was Mondo or not. I'm, I'm hesitant to say it definitely was, in case it turned out to be, like, Spoke or Bottleneck, but... <laughs> Um, I definitely had a conversation about wanting to do some posters for like Ryan Johnson's movies mm-hmm. and I could just see like, but if you did probably break, you did break with Mondo, right? So I could, yeah, could I be Mondo. With Mondo and it's like long been a dream of mine to do the brothers bloom because I love the mm-hmm. brothers bloom so much and do something for knives out. But at the time I was thinking, okay, well like Mark Aspinall could do like a really awesome brothers bloom poster and this artist could do a really kick-ass brick poster and mm. and so i do i do still have that that thing of i'll, I'll have an idea but i'll just think well i'm yeah. this isn't an idea for me you know okay i understand yeah. But that, um but yeah so i the, the positive side of this was that while i was studying advertising i then discovered that illustration was a thing because you see these great like painted um advertisements it's like oh someone had to do that mm-hmm. and learning more about the process that you have an art director who then hires a photographer or a filmmaker or an illustrator. By the time I finished university, I was like, Oh, maybe I could, maybe that's what I could do because I love drawing and all the way through uni, I was drawing kind of just for me because I enjoyed it. Mm. And so I graduated, um, and I had my degree in graphic in advertising, which was useless (laughs) because I didn't want to do it. Um, but I'd learned, I'd learned a lot through it. Like I'd learned a lot about sort of how to generate ideas, which, and, and like the way I sketch now is all through stuff that I learned in advertising, like how to get an idea down on paper. Like I, I feel like I sometimes think like, I think more like a graphic designer than an illustrator sometimes because that's sort of how I was trained. Um, but yes, I graduated and I went to work in a record shop, um, and I was kind of drawing on the side. (laughs) And do you do you know that uh, Matt Ferguson also started out in the record shop? Yeah, yeah, this is a cool place to work. Everyone wants to go <laughs> work for like H and B or Virgin Records at the time because you got like discount on movies and records and mm. all the other cool shit they sold. Yeah, I, I worked in a sneaker store, so that that's oh, that's my oh, record same. store. Yeah, I I um I was co manager of a um a sneaker store for a while as well, like. It's quite nice to have that in my back pocket because if illustration ever goes off the rails, like I know I could go back and run a shoe shop. And to be honest, I'd be pretty happy running a shoe shop. <laughs> yeah, I, I um, bet. I definitely. I mean, you you are the one that puts up. Hey, I trade some APs against some uh, some 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 sh- sneaker buddy uh, buddying. Yeah, you know what? Why why not? Um, sure. Yeah. We were talking. I think just just before we started um, filming this, we were talking about like being famous yeah <laughs> um, and I, I do not consider myself to have any level of fame however i am aware that i've got like fifty thousand instagram followers mm-hmm. and like some of them have got to have like size ten and a half feet yeah and maybe they're into the same sneakers it, that i it's, am it's me and, it's me buddy oh okay you're the one i'm i'm competing with yeah <laughs> um so what the hell why not like i know there are people out there who want like the baseball cards and the posters mm-hmm. and if they're willing to trade a pair of you know union air jordan ones for a a, a poster that is sure. worth a lot of money then yeah i mean i got the um the union air jordan fours a couple mm. of weeks ago uh from a a guy who started collecting my work who who's trading it for a baseball card 
Um, oh, I'm not go. trading it like I, but he's, he let me have the shoes for retail, which is insane because they're going yeah, for like I know, I know, yeah. eight, 900 bucks on eBay. But, you know, he let me have them for retail and a couple of signed baseball cards. And I was so, so grateful. And like, if that's one of the slight fringe benefits from for having this job, then mm. I'm, I'm absolutely going to the kit. Yeah, I, I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so back on what I did, so I, I was basically just drawing in my bedroom because I love drawing yeah. and I was kind of vaguely aware that illustration was a thing that I could do. And I did some posters for like club nights that friends were running and uh, I did like album artwork for a, a buddy. And I, I did, um, I kind of created a pretty crappy website because this was back <laughs> in 2002 and I didn't, I, I know I knew how to code enough that I could put some thumbnails on a page mm. and I could put my email address on there. So I did that. And, um, I think back in sort of 2000 and yeah, 2002, 2003, there weren't a lot of like art design blogs. There was like five. Was, yeah. And wasn't that like a t Tumblr, Tumblr? Was that a thing then or? Oh, that was way, no, Tumblr was way later. later. Tumblr okay. was kind of late, uh, like 2000 and I'm trying to think when I signed up Tumblr, I feel like Tumblr was like 2006, seven. Okay, yeah. Could I mean, be. Um, cause I had MySpace. Yeah, me too. That, which, which, yeah, which I was posting art up on, but like no one's going to see it apart from my friends. Um, but yeah, so I had my kind of crappy website. Is it still up? Is your MySpace I, still up by the way? Yeah. MySpace, Matt Taylor. <laughs> you can't, right. You, you can't find me unless you know specifically like a comic that I was into circa 2002. Okay. So next and question, what kind of comic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not, we're not talking about that. There's some, I, this is dreadful. I can't delete it because I I can't remember my past. <laughs> oh man! Um, so it's just it's just out there in the ether, and I know it's there, and I just I just keep my fingers crossed that no one ever finds it because it's got some dreadfully embarrassing blog posts on it. Oh that I just, man! I can't get rid of. You know you know what's um, going to happen next with your fifty thousand followers, Matt? They're going they're going to find you. Yeah, they might do. I mean. You know what? I'm not even going to give like a hint as to how you can because I really wish it would stay buried. And I wish I deleted it <laughs> in like 2006 when I could remember what the password is. But... Should I cut this part out? Nah, it's fine. <laughs> We're good. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I had my my, uh, my kind of crappy website, but it had my like art that I'd been doing mm -hmm. and it got featured on a design blog. Um, and then that was a guy who worked at Burton Snow boards oh, okay was obviously reading this blog and he got in touch and he said i like your art do you want to design some snowboards and it was more money than i had ever seen in my life for a single thing mm. um and like even now like it's, it was a pretty good it was, i mean it was an amazing fee at the time even now it's pretty good <laughs> um but i just sort of said yeah great and uh i i, I designed these six snowboards for burton mm. um that was in 2000 and Four, I think. Damn, man! And that was like my first proper job. So much, so much stuff is popping up about you that I did not know. I, I and I, I, tr I thought I did my research. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing this for like I so I graduated in two thousand two, yeah. so I've been drawing for like eighteen years on and off, um, and like properly for like the last fifteen. But like, there's been some wild changes in how my my style looked mm -hmm. from like way back then. Um, frustratingly uh, like on pinterest some of like the highest hits are like old work and a style that i don't really draw it anymore which is frustrating um but yeah like there's a lot of my work out there uh, but yeah so i did these boards for burton and then the the um nate who worked at burton who commissioned me moved to um complex magazine mm -hmm. which i think is like still going yeah um, complex is still going yeah yeah, um, and so he got me to do some some illustrations for Complex, and then he left Complex, but the next art director who took over from him still had my details, so he offered me a few more gigs. Mm -hmm. And then because at the time there wasn't, like you say, a huge like swathe of art out there like there is now, um, I just kind of got up, picked up gigs word of mouth, or because people had seen my work in Complex, they asked me to do a piece. Yeah. Um, and, I, and, I, and that was when I started like trying to be a bit more proactive with self-promotion. So I started emailing. I, so I used to go into like news agents. I would find magazines I liked. Mm -hmm. I would look at like the, the credits and I would find the name of the art director. Yeah. 
try and work out like if there was an email address, I would take the email address, I'd get the postal address. And then I'd take that home and I'd write emails to art directors or I'd like try and guess the email address. Mm. You know, is it like first name dot last name at complex.com or is yeah. it like, you know, at Condé Nast because all yeah, the Condé exactly. Nast, you know? Um, and I would send postcards in my work in if there was an address and just kind of keep my fingers crossed. And some of those turned into jobs. That's crazy. Because cool, yeah. that that's kind of how you used to do it. You just... Um, yeah, no, there's, there's something different, you know? There's, there's stuff uh, I hear from the, let's let's call them a little bit older artists that uh, didn't have the digital <laughs> ways to promote themselves. It is like, hey, I had this portfolio and I also had my portfolio and I tried to show it to like everybody. But now I have Instagram, yeah. my super big portfolio. Yeah. It's like super fast and easy. So it's great. I mean, it's it, it was simultaneously like harder and easier because nowadays there's so much mm -hmm. out there, you know, Instagram and Twitter and Tumblr and ArtStation and Behance, webs people's websites, yeah. you know, you've, you've got so much out there. And if you're an art director, how on earth do you like pass all of that information into, OK, I want to hire this artist for mm -hmm. this thing. Um, so you've got like way more competition, but at the same time, it's easier to put your work out mm -hmm. there. And back in, you know, 2003, four, like the difficult thing was getting an art director to like actually look at your work, mm. you know, because they might get, I don't know, 20 postcards a day mm. and, you know, they have to physically file them and you're relying on like one image and like maybe like a letter saying, hey, look at my website, here's the address. Yes. Yeah. But then that art director has to sit down and physically mm -hmm. like no, visit your website. No link clicking. Oh, you know, it bookmark bars full of artists who you might want to work with. And, you know, there were postcards I sent out and I didn't, um, I didn't hear from uh, the, the clients who ended up being my clients for like maybe two or three years down the line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Because they'd seen my work and they obviously put it in a file mm -hmm. And kept it there until the right project came up. Oh, that's nice. I mean, that's it. That's yeah. something that that people like keep their keep the cards and they're like, eh, not needed right now. Phew. Yeah. Whereas nowadays, like I like I struggle to keep up with how many artists I follow. Mm. Like, I follow too many people on Instagram, um, and I just kind of forget. Like I'll see an artist and think, oh, I want to keep up with what they're doing, so I'll follow mm. them. And then you know, you follow so many people that the work gets kind of buried. Yeah. And then you sort of, um, but my, um, my girlfriend's an art director and, you know, she'll often just say, you know, who are you following? Who's new and good. Mm. And so we just kind of share stuff back and forth. And like, I kick myself about artists. I think, Oh God, I really should have recommended that person to her mm. because they're amazing. But like they're buried a hundred followers deep yeah, on yeah, my yeah. Instagram. And I just, I don't see the work anymore. Yeah. Um, I used to have like OCD about like clicking on all the stories. I couldn't handle mm -hmm. it that there was like the the, the Instagram uh, circle around it. Yeah, tell me about but that. I I gave up. I gave up on that. It's not possible anymore. And I just do that on my private account. But it's like ugh. yeah. Oh, I mean, I remember you know waking up in the morning, opening Instagram and being able to scroll back to where I'd stopped looking at it the night before. Mm -hmm. And like, great, I'm all caught up. And now it's just like the, infinite. That's scroll. that's why I got off. That's why I got off Twitter. Twitter was the worst mm. back then. Even then, you know, it was like crazy. But yeah. Yeah. It's, there's so much and it's, it's good in some ways, like I say, because it kind of democratizes art and everyone can put stuff out, but also you're just like a tiny, tiny little speck mm. in an ocean of content and you just have to hope that someone sees it. Yep. But you just have to be very aggressive about promoting That's why yourself. tagging, guess, tagging all that stuff is so important. Yeah. I guess that's the thing, like you still have to be aggressive about promoting mm. yourself. You just have to do it a different way. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, it was sending out 500 postcards and, you know, a hundred emails and literally spending like a week where I did no drawing and I was just emailing and like cold calling people. Mm -hmm. Like there was a few art directors. I literally rang up and said, hi, I'm an illustrator. Can I come in and show you my book? <laughs> and you had to hope that they would say, yeah, I guess, you know, you're not showing mm. them anything. You're just saying, look, I, I really want to come and show you my portfolio. And again, like a couple of those, I definitely, I went into Penguin a couple of times with my book mm -hmm. um, to show art directors before I got any work, like a couple of years before I got any work with them. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so that was, that was kind of how I, I kind of very slowly became an illustrator. Mm -hmm. How I was doing it. Do you remember what was your first poster in that regard? My first poster? Um, 
trying to think now. Like the first poster I did, I think, was Lost in Translation, which was a private commission mm -hmm. um, for Billy, who's now like my friend Billy. Um, yeah. And then the first actual movie poster I did, I was going to say it was Brick, but it wasn't. It was uh, Star Trek Arena. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, but it came out afterwards. Um, so that was when I was working. I was working in a design studio in twenty. Uh, 2011 into 12 mm -hmm. I went there for about 18 months and um, I think that was when I was starting to get a lot more kind of confident as an artist mm -hmm. and I remember uh, Ollie uh, Moss mm -hmm. who was a friend I think we just kind of made friends over Twitter okay there you go. like we just like, like a long time ago now and um, he obviously he at that time had done you know star wars and lord of the rings and like he'd he'd had a run of great posters at mondo and they'd asked him to art direct a series of posters or maybe he'd asked them if he could art direct a series of posters mm -hmm. um anyway um yeah he asked me if i would do a star trek poster for um the episode arena which is the one with the gorn and like the fight at the rocks and mm -hmm. uh, uh so i i did that but i didn't actually work with mondo on that i did that with ollie um like he was art directing me mm -hmm. so and then that went in for approvals for like a year or something crazy and then in the meantime uh mitch had seen my work and i think rob had seen my work as well i uh, sorry mitch Putnam and rob jones yeah yeah um, they're, they're, they're gonna be on on, on the podcast so we, we we're gonna physically talk on friday but um the the podcast is gonna come out oh, after you sweet that's the, right i'll definitely be watching that because I'm, I'm happy to watch mitch and rob talk anytime because they're great yeah um but yeah, like they, uh, I think Mitch got in touch with me initially and he, he just said he'd see it. Mitch is very, very brief in his emails. Mm. I like, um, <laughs> but also it was, it was a really, really brief message. It was like, we've seen your work. Do you want to work with us? What movies do you want to do? And I was kind of blown away because I'd, um, like I'd followed Mondo for a few years at that point and mm. I was a big fan. I think I'd sent my work to them and asked, you know, can I work for you? Can I make posters for you? And I, you know, I don't know whether they kept my work on file or mm. whether they'd seen something else and thought, Oh, let's get this kid to do some drawing. Mm. Um, and yeah, so Mitch asked me what I'm going to do. And I, I was like super into brick at that time. I mean, I still am, but I think I'd seen it quite recent to that. And so I was like, yeah, can I like, I like brick. Can I do a poster for that? And Mitch like, well, I think we kind of know Ryan. So we'll ask him, and then, like, a day later, I had an email back going, yeah, let's do a brick poster. So I did, like, three or four sketches, sent them in. They picked one. Mm. I drew it. And then it came out. <laughs> That's basically it. Um, and it released alongside, I think it was Ken Taylor's Where the Wild Things Are. Mm -hmm. I'd have to double check on that. But I'm pretty sure it came out the same week as that. And I was like, wow, come in. Like, I was a big fan of Ken's work already at that point. Is it yeah. Ken or Martin? No, it was Ken. Um yeah, and then off the back of that, people responded really positively to it, mm. and they liked it internally. And then uh, they, I think the next one they asked me to do was, oh, it was a poster for True Detective, which never actually got used. Okay, lost lost posters again. Yeah, I, that one's on my Instagram. I think that that one's yeah. out there in the world. I definitely okay. posted it. Um, but that was supposed to be part of like a series with, I think, like. I think Francesca did one and uh, Ericsson did one as well. I felt like Jock was part of that sometime. Okay. Maybe not. I might be misremembering. But anyway, my one didn't didn't get used in the end, which, you know, fine. Mm -hmm. um, and they they asked me to do Dallas Buyers Club and American Hustle. Yeah. Well, when did Fight Club, when did Fight Club come out, by the way? Because it's the similar style to the brick one. Oh, yeah, no, Fight Club was a few years later. Um, okay. Fight Club, weirdly, the origin of that was a piece that I did while I was working at a design studio. While I was working at I Love Dust, the design studio mm -hmm. I worked for for a bit. And uh, we'd done a pitch for a poster for a film about bare knuckle fighting. Mm -hmm. And so I had an idea which I'd sketched for that, but ended up not being the one I used. Mm. So then when... Um, I'm trying to remember how Brit, how Fight Club came about, whether I just put the sketch up on Instagram and said, here's a stupid Fight Club sketch, and then <laughs> Rob asked... Hey, let's Rob make it a poster. Rob wanted, yeah, Rob and Mitch said, hey, do you want to actually turn this into a poster? 
or whether they commissioned me. I have a feeling that I did the sketch just, I just did the sketch because mm. I, I had an idea. Mm. Um, and then uh, like a year or two later, they actually said, do you want to, do you want to make this into a finished poster? And, and we did. And it, it was only after I finished it that I looked at it and, and realized that it was very similar in Stars of My Brick one. Yeah. But okay. I think that's possibly because I did the sketch around the time that I was doing the Brick Oh, okay. Stuff. Yeah. See? Um, Similar, it's just, uh, sim yeah, similarities it's, could be it's seen. Kind of, it's kind of hard to keep up because I've, I've done so many drawings. I kind of forget sometimes when I've done them. Hmm. But also sometimes I just flat out forget projects I've done. Like I was talking <laughs> to someone the other day and they were like, oh, you did such and such. I was like, did I? Oh, yeah, I did. Because <laughs> my Instagram feed is... Um, one of the things I learned uh, is that if you put work out that looks a certain way, people will ask you to do more of that work. Yeah. So for a while I was like really into bicycles. And so I did lots of illustration of bicycles and then lots of people commissioned me to do more drawings of bicycles. because It was kind of the only thing on my website. Uh -huh. And after a while, like bicycles are really time consuming <laughs> to draw <laughs> because of all the spokes. And yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I took all my bicycle work off my website and then I didn't get asked to do any anymore. That's crazy. <laughs> um, so, so like my, I do a lot more work than I post on like Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'd say I probably only post about 50% of the work I do. Okay. And the work I don't post, it's not because I'm not proud of it because I'm happy with pretty much everything I put out, but it's just, I don't necessarily want to do more of a certain thing. Uh -huh. um, and sometimes I just flat out forget, like I'll just lose <laughs> track of a project. I'm pretty bad with comic covers because with comics, like, you do it and then it's solicited. So you normally do it like a month or two ahead of the solicitation. So mm. by the time it actually gets released into the world, it's been finished for two months. And then it's another three months till the book comes out. Yeah. So there's all these little kind of like dates that you can hit to share it. But like I like sharing stuff immediately when I finished it. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. yeah. And so if I don't, I'll, you know, or like I, I won't realize that the solicits have come out. Yeah, so, I totally um, understand that. <laughs> Yeah, and so there's like, ah, oh, damn, the time to shout about this would have been like a month ago when the solicits dropped. Oh, it's all right, I'll shout about it when the book comes out. And then you forget when the mm. book comes out and mm. suddenly you've got this situation of like, oh, damn, I did this cover and it's been out for a month or two. Yeah. There was a, uh, and, and by that point, I'm on to the next thing. So, so Social media scheduling, it's, uh, it's tough. <laughs> yeah, it really is actually. I need to be a bit more on it because, I, again, like my girlfriend always reminds me that I should post on social media more and i should actually share stuff like more frequently and i, I always say yes i will definitely do that and then like even now i'm actually remembering something um so the scoop poster that came out for mm. monday last week i haven't posted about it on social media yet and i should have mm. because um because it's still in the shop like people can buy i know it. that i i mentioned that on the on the podcast so tonight it's going to come out and people will know that it's still there mm-hmm Okay, well, by the time this comes out, hopefully I'll have posted about it on social media. Yeah, you can just reshare um, my link and say you're in it. So. There we go. Yeah, problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> Make it easy. <laughs> yeah, but um, I mean, I mean, you have you have you have two you have two prints in in the release podcast. You got the Green Lantern and Scoop in there. Oh, the Green Lantern. Yes, again, another one. But you I posted should've... about that. I saw. Yes, you. I did post about that, um, but I didn't post about it ahead of time, which I felt bad for because. I should. I feel like I should have done more promotion ahead of it, mm. so that when it dropped, there were more people like, "We got to get this now," um, because you know what, poster. The, you know, there's so many things dropping every I week. I know. It's yeah. That's uh, that's you why sort of need to artists like artists say like mm. that's that's why they love to listen to my release podcast because they catch up what has been out and like like what people yeah. are putting out. So yeah. Um, in fact, one of the questions you asked me was like, you know, what? Um, oh, we, we'll get to it but like you know what posters do you like at the moment mm. and I was trying to think like I don't know what posters I like at the moment mm. I'm so out of the loop onto what's dropped over the last few yeah, weeks yeah and like, having so many like so many people that you follow all this stuff get washed away you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah that's, I think that kind of um, getting back to what we are talking about like that's how I kind of got into working with Mondo mm. um, and I mean aside from a couple of releases I've done with Bottleneck and Spoke I've basically all my posters, like alternative mm. posters that come out through Mondo. Um, just, you know, I, I sort of have a loyalty to them because they, they brought me in. And I mean, my, my kind of rule of thumb is that if, um, if Mondo sort of have the license for it, then I would rather do a poster with them. And that's not out of any disrespect to say bottleneck mm. or spoke. Yeah, it's but, loyalty. In the end. You know, I would always, I would always kind of want to have first refusal with Mondo 
but you know like um they so bottleneck asked me to do star wars and at the time i didn't feel like confident enough to no that's not the right way to describe it like but which one Mondo were doing a bunch, um the the star wars a new hope i did for my yeah Bond okay yeah the, the the one where it's like angled you know yeah the the, yeah, the one the, the one i have <laughs> oh the one you have yeah. okay um, um so yeah like mondo were putting out a bunch of star wars stuff and i sort of felt like they if they wanted me to do star wars they would have asked me to do star wars so i didn't feel bad like when bottleneck said mm. do you want to do star wars saying yeah okay um and I'm still, I feel so, I feel so bad. I'm still working on Empire Strikes Back. Mm. I've been working on it for like three years now and I keep putting it to one side because I can't, there's a bit, there's one little bit of it that I can't get right and I've drawn about six times. Mm. Um, and I feel really bad because Joe emailed me at the start of this year, uh, Joe, who works at Bottleneck, mm. um, emailed me at the start of this year saying, can you, can you try and do it this year because it's the 40th anniversary. Mm. And I was like, yeah, 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 I'll definitely do it this year. And like, it's November and I'm still, agonizing over this one little square of the drawing i haven't finished it okay maybe i'll do that this afternoon maybe this afternoon i'll, I'll try and take there another you go. Crack at some it. some motivation some remember remembering and motivation uh, i i'm grateful for joe's near infinite patience with me saying yeah. i will definitely do that for yeah, you he's, and then, he's a good guy yeah singularly failing to do the thing that i said i'd do <laughs> but i do i will finish it because it's a really good poster and even though i've been working on it for three years mm. I look back at the bits I did three years ago and I'm still happy with them, okay. which I think indicates to me it's worth yeah. finishing. That means a lot. Um, <sighs> Maybe this year. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this year. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. So um, since I do a lot of movie reviews as well on the blog and I'll talk mm -hmm. about films in general, um, I was wondering what the what was the last movie that you saw? I mean, we can't go to the cinema exactly, but what's the last one mm -hmm. that you saw? Um, well, I know the, the answer I gave to you was Alien. Uh, mm -hmm. the the truth is it was actually Milan because I watched <laughs> Milan with my daughter on on Sunday. The, but the, I did the, the 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 Disney version or the oh I'm sorry the the animated version. Uh, the uh, the cartoon yeah, yeah the um, the original. Mm -hmm. I, I in fairness I slept through about forty five minutes of it because <laughs> um my my daughters had woken up at half five. Yeah. And I've been awake for a long time on Sunday already. So uh, <laughs> while my youngest had a, my youngest was having a nap, yeah. and uh, my oldest and I, when my youngest isn't napping, we'll watch a movie um, or do some drawing. And um, she went to watch a movie, so she watched Mulan, and I had a bit of a sleep. So I didn't really count that. Mm. Um, but yeah, so Alien. Let's say Alien was the last movie that I chose to sit down and watch. Mm. The funny thing is, I just watched that uh, on Monday. It's so good. Mm -hmm. So did, did you see very very good did, uh, speaking of new releases uh that we did earlier did you see the two alien pieces that came out no who are they by? uh they are one was by pablo rivera or paolo rivera he did it for site oh, for really? sideshow for sideshow art uh, oh yes i did oh um, and and uh and rock and jelly bean what's that rock and jelly beans one? no that's not the one i'm talking about I'm, oh, talk okay, that one was I'm talking yeah. about yeah that uh, I, I'm I don't know I'm I'm a little bit on a, on a fence about them because or like what what Rock and Jelly Bean does because I think it's too sexual and too sexist in a certain way but I'm yeah, it's just okay, me I can yeah fair enough I mean I I like his work I can definitely see the problems with it mm -hmm. um, but just from an aesthetic point of view he's a really good painter yeah and he's someone who work I've I've followed for yeah it's, so it's not about long. his style it's uh, about more about his mo yeah. motives and themes that he puts yeah in. totally yeah i can i can see mm -hmm. that um but yeah and the other one was a fan group exclusive of uh christoph domoratsky and he did like four different oh. four different versions of alien and they all look amazing it's it's incredible oh cool i'll check yeah those. i'll i'll, 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 I'll put it i'll put it in a chat for you hold on well so you can mm -hmm. uh, or you cannot watch it right do you not uh you know what i've got my laptop right here so i'll just um yeah i'll grab it up so i've got that in front of me yeah just want to make sure it doesn't come into screen hey that's boom, good boom, so boom. you can't see it in my laptop's right here exactly yes yeah. uh, since you can have the laptop up that's fine <laughs> I just posted it on on, on Skype, so you can see it in a second. But they they just look amazing. This is a, it's three, like four different amazing pieces. My favorite is the last one, the the one with the gray and the green. Mm-hmm. And uh, second, uh, where did you post it? Uh, on the Skype chat. 
my chat one. You saw, you saw it, I think, I don't know. You, 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 it, it says it saw, you saw it already, but I don't know if it was on the phone. Oh, that's weird. Oh, you know what? It's because I've got Skype running on my phone and my laptop. It's, it's probably on my, on my phone. <laughs> probably not then. I... Uh, hang on, let me just quickly Google it. Uh, I, I don't know if you can find uh, them. Because, who's the artist again? Uh, it's Christoph Domorowski, but I, Krabs, they call him Krabs, but he doesn't like to be called Krabs. So. Okay. But I'll, I'll do it on Twitter real quick. Hold up. I'll send it to you on Twitter. Oh, sweet. Okay. This is all live people. <laughs> <laughs> so one second here um, um yeah it's a great piece so for the people that have seen it it's definitely uh the, the ones that got into your group because it was just fan group exclusive and you have to get you you had to got uh, into the group and uh yeah it's it looks just incredible and here we go i'll oh, can i not uh, i can only send one <laughs> at a time that's ridiculous okay here you go but you get the gist of it here Okay, let's have a look. It should be on there now. Yeah, my uh, my laptop's having a bit of a moment with the uh, <laughs> Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's the one that came out. If you yeah. look at the details he put in with the alien and like on his on the skin and on the tail, there it just looks incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm into that. That's good. Yeah. Did did, did cool. you know Christoph Tomaszki or not? Uh, not personally, I know his work. Okay, okay, that, um, there, yeah, that was more the question. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, with a lot, I mean, I, I'd like to say I know lots of the artists who work in this scene, mm. like, I know a few people, but um, there's always someone, like, yeah. new coming out. I, I think, I'm sort of aware of most of them, but, like, not necessarily friends with everybody. Yeah, sure, of course not. I mean, um, how could you? I mean, Aliens had a bunch of decent posters done for yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> especially lately, I mean, yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I don't think any of them are better than the original one sheet, which is one of the best. Yeah, that's the one you gave posters. me to show, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's one of the best movie posters that there is. Yeah, it, it's it's a really incredible piece. Do you own one? Uh, not the one sheet. No, um, if I sent you a picture, I've got uh, the the print that Tyler did last or well, beginning of this year i think mm -hmm. um the one with the japanese yeah type oh that's oh yeah you the one you hung up so we, we're gonna yeah I'm, I'm just gonna show it and we're gonna we're gonna circle back to that later yeah we'll come back around <laughs> yeah to that. exactly okay so that's cool to see and um what are some must-see movies that will come out in the future i'm trying to think what i'm what i'm really excited about i really want to see wonder woman 84 yeah that's getting that's, that's getting pushed <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. Well, I'm kind of happy about that because I'm. I want to do a poster for it. Okay. And there's no way that I'm going to have time to do a poster for it before December. So did you do one um, already? No, I've got an idea. I just haven't quite. I haven't put it down on paper yet. I do. I do all the work up here before I actually put it on paper. Yeah. Like normally, uh, my better posters, I can sort of almost see them in my head mm. before I have them on paper, and that that's usually my problem because. It's, it's trying to get what's up here down onto the paper. Yeah. I don't do a lot of my figuring out on the page. I do it all in my head. And then by the time I'm actually drawing it, I sort of, I've pretty much decided what I'm going to draw. Mm, exactly. Um, but yeah, so that, that looks pretty good. Um, in the Heights, uh, Lin Manuel Miranda, which was supposed to be out this summer. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm sort of back and forth on the West Side Story remake because I like the original yeah. and I like the stage version, but I'm not wild on Ansel Elgort and I don't like Steven Spielberg feels like a weird choice for that. Yeah. I mean, I'll go see it, but I'm not, I don't know. Like part of me is very excited. Cause it's like, wow, big screen musical. And like, they've got the money to make it really like mm. big, but I'm not a hundred percent sold on the people behind it, which is why I'm more excited about in the Heights. Mm. Cause that, the trailer for that just completely blew me away. Yeah. But like, honestly, I've, I've sort of lost track of what movies are coming out. Right. Everything gets pushed I, back I, so far. Yeah. If I wouldn't cover uh, it on my news podcast, I wouldn't know either. Yeah. Like I was excited to see Batman next year, yeah. but I guess we won't now. Um, and the matrix, but that's like miles down the line. Uh, I mean, there's the new Thor movie, whenever that comes out, yep. that's going to be great. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, it's weird how movies have sort of like new movies have just stopped being part of our lives. Mm. Um, you know, it's I crazy. As someone it, who, it's like a big part of my job as well. Yeah. Uh, I, and I'm sure that like, come, you know, maybe once, you know, vaccines are rolling out and maybe coronavirus has got more under control and cinemas mm. are starting to open again. It all just feels like very unimportant. That's, at the moment. that's one of the things that I, I really was like, 
that was really sad about it because like for example the 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 cinemas here um because i work closely with a cinema here and uh they they were open and they never had a problem nothing corona wise everything was like super on the hygiene level they wanted it to be and stuff mm -hmm. like that so they 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 could have uh, they could have stayed open easily and they prepared like also like other restaurants they closed restaurants yeah. down that all like bought uh, like filters like air filters things and had like all the the, the hygiene um, measurements up and precautions up and they had to close even though they prepared the best and yeah. then then the thing is like compared to the school where i work you know they couldn't even like put in like a like an air filter at school where it's where where mm -hmm. where it is needed so it's like why do they have to close if if they put their own money in and they can't even like open stay open and it's like a crazy thing that is really weird by um how the government handled it and yeah, I mean, we could do a whole other podcast yeah. about government handling of coronavirus in our respective countries, but I feel like that would have a very different <laughs> it would. to this one. <laughs> yeah, it would, it would call it Badlands. Say, it, it's gonna, yeah, it's going to sit somewhere between they're doing a terrible job and they're doing the best yeah. that they could under these circumstances. I, I personally feel like ours are leaning slightly more towards doing a terrible job, but... Yeah. That's I mean, I mean, yeah, that's, that's right. I mean, some things were they, they done very well, but some things are just a head scratcher. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see the logic in it and it wasn't really explained. So. Yeah. But yeah, you, ha you have to hope that they know more than we do and it makes sense to them. But I'm not convinced. Yeah, by that. same here. Same here. But uh, but yeah, like I'm, I'm looking forward to going back to the movies again. Like the theaters over here were open from like July through October, but there was no movies mm -hmm. apart from Tenet which, you know, almost became frustrating in the way that they were doggedly sticking to the yeah. You know, at the beginning of this year, Tenet was like on my must-see mm -hmm. list because it's Christopher Nolan, it's a brand new movie, it's got um, a great you cast. Watch it? Everything about it was like speaking to me. And the more it rolled on, the more they were insistent, we must see Tenet in theaters. Mm -hmm. We're going to... It was just like, come on, guys, read the room. Just, it doesn't matter that much. Like, I kind of hope... Um, I sort of hope that Warner Brothers just released Wonder Woman eighty four on direct to streaming at Christmas. Mm. Like, I don't, I don't, I love going to the cinema, but what I love more than going to the cinema is watching movies. Mm. And I'd be just as happy watching a movie on my. I mean, I didn't go see Tenet in theaters. I'm going to watch it when it comes around mm. on um, on iTunes. And uh, you know, at this point, I just kind of wish some of these movies came out and we could just see them and. I know that, you know, there are many, many reasons why they can't do that because the money side of things, essentially, yeah. because it would, like, fatally undermine theatres. But still, but, I, don't, I wonder, like, if to yeah. put it out, like, two years later, and then it would make $800 million? Who knows? I mean, the, the only possible, the, the only plus side to this is that the next, like, 18 months to two years, we're going to get so many films. Mm -hmm. There's just going to be, like... Like all the stuff that was due to come out next year, yeah. plus all the stuff that's due to come out this year, it's going to be like yeah. cinema. It's, it's crazy. And like, uh, for example, I I report that uh, 2009 was the last year where we didn't have any Marvel content, and now it's 2020. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, WandaVision's been pushed back as well. Exactly. So January. Exactly. So yeah, there's no new no new Marvel. I mean, fine because. There's been so much Marvel having a year off it. I wouldn't say is the worst yeah. thing in the world. Um, I was looking forward to seeing Black Widow and what else was it this year? Eternals? No poster to do. Yeah, Eternals. I think it was. Yeah. Well, I was gonna. I was. I'm. I'm gonna do a poster for Black Widow. Hopefully. Um, yeah, but, but it's not not I mean, not on the menu Marvel. right now. <laughs> nah, and because I because I've I've been stung in the past by doing posters for Mondo for Marvel um, movies before I've actually seen the mm -hmm. film. I was. I, I said I, I chatted with Eric about doing a um, Eric at Mondo about mm. doing a um, Black Widow poster, but sort of said I want to wait until I see the movie so that I don't yeah. like make the same mistake and maybe the End Game and not End Game Infinity War and put a whole yeah, 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 movie yeah. on there. <sighs> no, it's uh, not your fault. Yeah, Everybody like, did that. I mean, I was it. Yeah. I think it was. Um, was it? I think the statues. Um, I have the, the Thanos, the Thanos Endgame one here. Oh yeah. And they put on him the not the not the nano gauntlet. They put on him the the regular one, but he doesn't have. Mm -hmm. They don't have it. Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll get to it. But yeah, you know, well, a year without Marvel movies. 
fine. It's fine. They still exactly. exist. They're, they're going to be along next year. Mm-hmm. That'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of uh, other movies, like what what is your favorite movie then? Um, it's a bit difficult to narrow it down to just one. Uh, Romeo and Juliet, Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet. Okay. Yeah. In a pinch, I would say um, is one of my all time favorites. Like I will, I will always watch that film. Yeah. Like there, there's no, there's no circumstance where I wouldn't want to watch yeah. that. Um, point Break, like the original Point Break, not the, yeah. You know what? I'm just going to pretend the remake. Yeah, to- like exist. Total Recall uh, doesn't exist. To- oh no, dude. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm back. I'm back. To- I said Total Recall. The Total Recall one is also like we 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 can forget about that. The the remake. Yeah, yeah, that that doesn't exist. Um, so yeah, um, Romeo and Juliet, Point Break, um, Almost Famous, Almost famous. Uh, Cameron Crowe's Almost Famous, and. Out of sight. I, I love out of sight. Out okay, of sight. that's a that's a crazy choice. I've watched that film uh, probably more than any yes? other film. Oh my god! Purely because I think it came out in like ninety eight. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna say, and I had it on videotape. And when I was at university, it was one of maybe like ten movies that I had yeah. on video. So you know, you used to watch uh, as with all media. Yeah. You know, when you didn't stream it, when you had to have a physical mm-hmm. copy of it, you'd listen to albums or you'd watch movies over and over again because mm-hmm. they were the only movie you had. I, um, I, I think so I remember. Um, I remember watching that movie in at, at the cinema because I I used to go like when I was like when I was younger. My my birthday parties were like, hey, we're gonna go to the cinema and gonna go to Mac, yes, McDonald's yeah. afterwards. So when I was like, I think uh, yeah. ninety eight, I was twelve years old. So I, I was, uh, so, so I, I said, I think I said definitely then back then, we, yeah, we're going to go see out of sight. So we did that. <laughs> wow. That's a grown up movie for a 12 year old, but okay. Yeah. But it was fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. wonderful. It's one of George Clooney's best performances. Mm. It's one of, I mean, it's, I'd say probably Jennifer Lopez's yeah. best performance. Um, although Hustlers last year was really yeah. good as well. Everything about it, the direction is so good. The music is incredible in that movie. David Holmes' score is just like uh, one that I will dip back into and listen just just because yeah. of. In fact, that's something I'd love to do like soundtrack art for. Although the the cover for the like soundtrack release is pretty much perfect in my <laughs> eyes, so I'm not sure if I could actually do it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I love I love that film. Yeah, it's so yeah, so I, yeah, yeah. Romeo and Juliet, yeah, Out of Sight, Point Break, and all yeah, the it, it just uh, Out of Sight just popped up on Netflix Germany. So I will I will definitely give it a rewatch because I mm. haven't seen it in a long time. But um, I watched it yeah, a year ago. I think it's probably due another yeah. rewatch. For which of your favorite movies would you love to do a movie poster? Um, okay, I've done Almost Famous. Although I have another idea, so I guess I could do that again. Um, probably Romeo and Juliet it's the one that I I would like to do the most and I'm simultaneously the most scared of doing Mm -hmm. because like with the exception of um, Lost in Translation which I've now taken three swings at and I'm I'm sort of inclined to maybe try Mm -hmm. again (laughs) you only get to do a poster once you know like no one's going to ask me to do another brick poster so like my one go at doing that movie I mean I'm lucky yeah. that it turned out well and i'm happy with it um but romeo and juliet is because it it's sort of it's such an important movie to me mm. a sort of again i have the idea in my head but a lot of it is dependent on having certain lightnesses mm. like it would yeah i have an idea that doesn't include lightnesses and i have an idea that does and i think the one that does is better mm. but it's um so i've i've been writing a comic on and off for about the last eight or nine years and i haven't drawn it because i don't feel i'm good enough yet to draw it and i suspect i probably never (laughs) will (laughs) i have a feeling it'll be an unrealized thing um but but romeo and juliet feels a bit like that to me that i I really want to do it but at the same time i really don't want to do it because i'd be terrified of getting it wrong and then that's my one shot at doing it and i kind of Mm. blew it even though um like evidence would suggest i'm pretty good at making film posters by this point some some might say (laughs) well i can objectively look at some of my posters and go okay like this works like stop being a baby about it just make the damn thing but like it's one of those things that it i'm i hope it will happen at some point i Mm. hope that like either mondo will have the license or someone else will have the license and reach out and say we want you to maybe joe's going to be patient (laughs) 
I mean, I'm doing uh, uh, I'm doing something for Moulin Rouge at the moment, okay. which is going quite well. Um, and it's it's sort of it's just it's in a bit of a holding pattern because of COVID and mm. everything. But eventually that'll that'll come together, and I hope that maybe that will be successful enough that I can then pitch my idea for Moulin okay. Rouge. Uh, sorry for Romeo and Juliet, and say, can I do this? Yeah. If I never get to, it, you know, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. It won't be a sort of, um, you know, a lost dream mm-hmm. or a oh, what if. But I, that's that's the one, I yeah. think. Um, I, I kind of like to do a Point Break poster as well. <laughs> Again, because I have an idea for it. And it's it's such a great, goofy, wonderful movie. Yeah. Um, out of sight, I feel like the art that exists is, good, is already as good as it's going to be. I don't think there's anything yeah, else. Yeah, but some add illustrated, some well. illustrated form. I, 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 I haven't seen a, like an illustrated poster for that in that way. Only the, the original key art. I don't know the original key art with the um, the kind of yeah, orange. Yeah. Uh, so that big. It's it, it looks almost painted already, and I feel like it just okay. it's it's so perfect. The typography on it is absolutely spot on. That, and I don't think anything I could do would would add up to that and i think that poster would be in the back of my mind and i'd end up okay. just doing a version of that but painted so it doesn't it doesn't need to exist okay i understand but uh, <laughs> I, I i beg to differ but i understand i i'll okay, take it okay. <laughs> this is jeez. Oh, this is one of the uh, the things that i've said online so many times that people repeat it back to me is not everything has to be a poster mm-hmm. um because i i put you know i put bits of art up and um you know, people say, where's the print of this? It's like, it's just, I just did it. Like not everything has to be mm. a print. Um, and a few people have repeated it back to me when I've, I've done bits of work, which were not intended to be anything. And then they end up being a print and it's like, yeah, okay, you got me there. But I would say that's, that's how I okay, feel about yeah, fair enough. out of sight. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have to exist. Like we've already got the best. Version All right. Of that. That's let's leave it at that then. Um, but speaking of posters, um, what are your favorite posters? As of right now, it doesn't have to be um, all alternative movie posters, but could be also key art as well. But you know how that is. Uh, yeah, key art. I'm struggling to think of at the moment, just because there's not been any this mm. year. Um, yeah, I'm sure but Dune will have a great. But didn't you like the the, the French every- Dispatched? You you put oh, that in yes. there. Yeah, they yeah, have they have you- beautiful uh, beautiful art. I think in that regard. Yeah, I mean to the surprise of absolutely no one because all of Wes Anderson's posters look exactly yeah (laughs) Uh, yeah French Dispatch looks really good that's a movie I'm excited about actually Uh, which again until you mentioned it I just completely Mm. blanked on Um, I look for I'm looking really looking forward to seeing that because it's got just the most ridiculously stacked cast and I'll always I'll always go and watch everything Wes Mm -hmm. Anderson makes because he's not made a bad movie what's your favorite Wes Anderson movie Oh, uh, Tenem Balms or Life Aquatic. Okay, okay. I think. Um, mm, probably Tenem Balms. Okay, I also like I Love Dogs. I'm really, I Love Dogs are fantastic. It's a Fox fan. Those are some great ones. Yeah. Spot for um, Darjeeling Limited as well, which I know isn't one of his mm-hmm. most popular, but yeah. it look, I think that film, that's the film of his which feels like it takes place in a world closest to our own. Mm-hmm. Like it's obviously very heavily stylized, but, but I think because it was like shot on location, yeah, there's there's less of the sort of artifice of um, you know, like say Grand Budapest Hotel, which does feel very like a sort of I'm trying to describe it like the only word. But they shot it on like, location. It was, but it was it, it was like, a it was actually a hotel or or no, it was a castle here in Germany. I think because it looks like a kind of chocolate box painting of a. Yeah. castle it, it makes it feel slightly unreal whereas the sort of landscape of the Darjeeling Limited if you know it feels like ostensibly like the mm-hmm. real world and actually the Hotel Chevalier short which um which he released beforehand which is that yeah. that great like double hander in the hotel with Natalie Portman and um Adrian Brody yeah that again feels more grounded in the real world like even something like um Tenenbaums which is like obviously mm-hmm. shot on location and it does feel like a very specific bit of New York. It is, it's so mannered and so designed that it, it, again, it feels like that one step from reality. Mm-hmm. Actually, after Jesus, after saying all of that and saying it's the most real world, like Bottle Rocket's the most real world. Because, <laughs> because Bottle Rocket is just very obviously set in the real world. And, mm-hmm. and it's pretty wonderful, actually, in its own way. I think it gets overlooked because, you know, 
every film becomes more and more stylized and more mm. and more like a Wes Anderson movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, it's hard to pick, but yeah, I think Ten of Arms is the one that I've rewatched the most times. All right. Okay, yeah. uh, that's a, that's a good pick. So, uh, what were uh, Francis oh, Pitch we posters? About, um, posters, your favorite posters as of right posters. now? Posters, yeah. Okay, so um, there's there's two posters which are on my mind at the moment a lot. Which I sent you a picture of one mm-hmm. of them, but not the other. Um, Rosemary Valero O'Connell's Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, pull that up because I just I just love it. I, I think it's perfect, and yeah. I love Rosemary's art. Um, and also, she did a Spider Gwen piece a mm-hmm. couple of years ago, which I'm trying to track down at the moment for a reasonable price. I think I found one on eBay, but I'm just keeping an eye on it to see what it goes for. Because my um, my eldest, I introduced my eldest to um, Spider Verse mm-hmm. about a month ago, and in the last month, she's watched it maybe eight times. Yeah, it's just it's just a great movie. Understandable. It's the best film of that year. It's the best superhero movie that there has ever been, and I love it more than anything. And the fact that my daughter now loves it as well, mm-hmm. and is like constantly drawing Gwen and Miles. Um, I bought the uh, the, the PS4, yeah. uh, the Spider Man Miles Morales. Which was just about week. to asset, yeah, yeah. So she's she's um, she doesn't really she hasn't really played video games very much, mm-hmm. but I was showing her the original PS4 Spider Man mm-hmm. like a month ago. And like all she wants to do is just swing around the city, and she's mastered that, so that's fine. Um, but when I told her that there was a Miles version, and especially with the, the um, if you pre-ordered it, you got the Spider Verse suit, mm. so Perfect. she can yeah. now be Miles from Spider Verse swinging around, and she's just like over the moon happy with yeah, doing that. Yeah, that's that's cool. I mean, I'm, I I'm a big Ghost of Tsushima fan, and I I'm riding around on my horse in my cool uh, samurai outfit and. Just mm-hmm. having fun looking at the beautiful landscape. So I, 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 you don't I, need to play the mission. I get her. Yeah. I get her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, so I'm I'm trying to find a um, a Spider Verse uh, like a Gwen piece. So people, her. if if um, you heard it here, Matt is looking. <laughs> yeah, um, I really like Justin's um, uh, Phantom Cities one. is really nice mm-hmm. as well. But there's something about Rosemary's which uh, sort of it. I feel like she would like. I think I probably prefer Justin's, but I think she would like Rosemary's mm-hmm. better. So I'm I'm trying to get a copy of that to put in a bedroom because um, yeah, the fact that she she loves Spider Verse makes me so happy. Yeah, and she's just like uh, she's constantly drawing Spider Man. Um, when we were watching it, she was the thing that stuck out to me was when uh, everyone's kind of pointing out like Peter B. Park is like looking a bit overweight. She was like. He's got a tummy like you've got a tummy. It's like, oh. <laughs> Thank you, daughter. Thank you. Yeah. It's time to start running again. Time to stop eating so much chocolate. <laughs> um, yeah. It's so, um, yeah. So Rosemary's um, spy, uh, Spider Gwen is on my mind a lot at the moment and her, her uh, Scott Pilgrim mm. as well, just because it, it's so good. And I've, I've tried to do Scott Pilgrim a couple of times now and still struggling with it. And uh, her piece is totally different from what I'm going to eventually do, mm. but it is absolutely fantastic. It's, I think it's my favorite of the Scott Pilgrim posters that have been released so far. Okay, cool. Um, but like in terms of current current like alternative movie posters, I bought uh, Killian Eng's Jason and the Argonauts last oh, week. Yeah. Same here. Big Which big Jason and the really Argonauts liked. fan. It's like one of my favorite myth Greek mythology pieces. So yeah, I've been wanting something. I've got one of um, Killian's pieces from I bought from MondoCon a few years ago, um, which he did with static media. Yeah. I forget what the piece is called. But I've been looking for something bigger of his for a while, and I saw that pop up, and I thought, yeah, that's that's. A good I love one. also like, my favorite um, one is uh, the the Galactus he did for Mondo, the the, the mm, Fantastic oh, Four for oh, series. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, everything he yeah. does is good. But it, uh, no, I I, I I I want to say yeah, but no, I'm not a big fan. Everybody's raving about the Lord of the Rings right now. Not the biggest fan, I have to say. It's not my favorite piece. I, it's, it's, I don't think I've seen it. It's him. good, but it's uh, yeah. He did it for private commission. It's it. Uh, I'll, I'll, oh, okay. I'll, I'll send it to you via Twitter. Hold up, <laughs> so you can okay. look at it. It comes in two different versions. I, I, I mentioned it also on the um, on the podcast on the release podcast. Oh, he did a Jurassic Park as well that I wasn't wild on, and I, you know, what? I think I know why. I think it's because. Killian has a very specific yeah, aesthetic. Exactly. And I and I think it only works for some films. Mm-hmm. 
And I think when it doesn't, it feels awkward. It feels off in kind of way. And mm-hmm. it, yeah, and it, it's in a way that like, you, it's not a fault with the art itself because mm-hmm. he's so talented and he's so good and like objectively, it's it's well drawn. Yeah. It's just there's something about the content versus his style that doesn't quite mesh. Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah, that's the only time that I see work of his mm. that I'm not like wowed on. But like even then, like oh yeah, I'm looking at this now. I still like it. I still like aspects of it, but yeah. I feel like yeah, you're right. I don't think it's the strongest thing he's done. And honestly, like the stuff of his which is best is his personal work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like, uh, his, exactly. His yeah, that's that's way more cool. I think that that's there's um, more love behind it. I think he loves the movies, but I think doing your own thing that comes from your own mind, mm-hmm. like your original content, not IP work, I think that uh, makes yeah. it makes it even better. So, yeah, I think you're 100 percent right there. Um, but Jason the Argonauts piece is great. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> I, I I picked that up as well. Yeah. So. Um, the other one. That I- this one. I, which one? Oh, sorry. Which, which one did you get? The the, I was the, say, the, um, the other. The foil or the the reg? Oh, the, just the reg. Okay, um, cool. Yeah. yeah, the reg. I'm not a huge fan of foil. Um, yeah. Foil imprints. To yeah. Be I, um, I love the golden yeah. fleece aspect behind it, but but still, yeah. I still went yeah, for the reg. I, I feel that. Um, the only the only exceptions I think really are uh, Martin. Anything Martin does on foil is like always incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, like the style. It sort of has to be something where the yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. And his Ghost in the Shell. His yeah. Ghost in the Shell yeah, is like true. the one for incorporating foil but it was, into, a, no, into a did you? But did you see the do- dollies with, the, with the, the, the Lord of the Rings one? No, I didn't. Go, uh, do I have that somewhere? Okay. He's selling a sketch, but you, you find that online. And they used okay. foil for that. And I saw actual... I saw actual um, uh, pictures and videos of the foil, and I think that's the best foil use I've ever seen. It looks actually like the fucking ring in the movie. It's crazy. Oh, awesome! Okay, yeah, because I've I've used foil a couple times, and I'm I'm sort of I don't like doing foil just for the sake of it. Mm. Like I know I know sometimes, especially with gig posters, quite often they'll be like they'll just be a foil variant because that's mm. just something that it seems to be like taken as red. Yeah, um, but. Uh, yeah, for me, there has to be a, a reason to incorporate it into the art. Like, I used it on Shade the Changing Girl, which I feel like that's the only time I've got foil right mm-hmm. because I feel like it works. And also because in that case, it was um, the the sort of... Uh, if, you, if you've read the comic that that art was based on, mm-hmm. it, um, it's got lots of kind of like iridescent color washes throughout the art. Mm-hmm. And so... It, I was trying to work out how to put iridescent rainbow colors in there without it being like a 20 color screen print Yeah, because that was the only way you could do it. And then um, rain, and it, rainbow and foil it, did the trick. Rainbow foil did the trick. Mm-hmm. And I think in that, in that very specific sense, like foil for me was the 100% right choice. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, by and large, I, I'm not, not a huge fan of it. So yeah, so I got the reg on that. Um, yeah, the other the other poster which I've seen this week, which I really like, is um, Dolly's Jaws. No, it's not Dolly's. It's Flory's. Oh, it's Flory's. Oh. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Do you want to do you want to edit that so I don't sound like a dick? <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually I actually uh, on the podcast on a release podcast because I had Dolly on for a piece and we talked about Dolly's piece and then I had later on Flory's piece and I mixed up the names as well. But you know what? It's it's because they're both one name illustrators Ex- and we were just yeah. talking about Dolly. Exactly. 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 It's yeah, all okay. good. It's all good. Don't worry. It, I, I got you. Okay. So, so Flora's jaws. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, I, I, I had it on. The, we had it on for the vice press, obviously the release, and talked yeah. about it. So that it was. It's. It sounds bad because I sound like I'm criticizing now. It's not 100 percent there for me, just because I, I personally, I think the beach huts, uh, the, the little beach tents, clash with the type. And but it's just like. I think it it does not with the regular version. I got the regular version, and it doesn't do that. Yeah, you're right. But and here's the thing: this is this is so like <laughs> this is just me. I prefer the colors of the variant because I feel like the colors of the variant, the um, the contrast yeah, I, between understand. underwater and the above, just like is perfect. Yeah, that, that's and why you get that's, that's why you get Jordan Breads. <laughs> yeah, because the colors are just perfect. It's really difficult. Cause it's like. You're right that on the on the reg the the beach huts don't clash, mm-hmm. but I prefer the colours of the other one where they do. But then it's like, well, you know. And as someone who sort of made variants in the past, where 
say one aspect of the art doesn't quite work in the variant mm. but the color does i know how frustrating that is when mm. especially when you're essentially just replacing colors on mm. the screen that suddenly one area will like jump out in a way that it didn't on the original artwork yeah but i totally get what you're saying because i had to, like the same thing i saw that i saw the, the the regular version i fell in love with it right away because it has like the typical jaws colors in that regard with the water and mm -hmm. everything and yeah perfect and then i saw the other one which i also like because of the colors as you said but some something didn't feel right there you know but, yeah, yeah, but and it's yeah. but still. I was chatting with a couple other artists recently, and we 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 all kind of agree that like Jaws has just been like done. Like there doesn't need to be any more Jaws posters for now. Like it, it there are so many, and I say this as someone who has done a Jaws poster, <laughs> which I actually forgot about until I was having this conversation. I was like, oh yeah, I, I did a Jaws poster, didn't I? Um, but it so for a film which I feel like has been really really done, mm. and also has such a great original one she yeah um i was i was really kind of impressed like flory's someone who whose work i kind of know but it's never like hugely jumped out at me before i like the jurassic park pieces mm -hmm. he did a couple of years ago i thought the rendering the coloring those was really smart but he's an artist who just just whatever reason never quite clicked for me but this the the choice of um having that split with the yeah, and rendering the shark underwater. The, the concept, basically, this was like. Yeah, but what the concept, but also the way he's rendered it. Okay. Yeah. Like the, the way that you get that split on the wave, is really good. It's so hard to draw like above and below water at the same time, mm. and for it to look like water. Yeah. And also like the. I think it's the darkness, of the underwater, which because it would be very easy to have rendered that shark lighter so that it was a bit clearer mm. but you know when you're underwater it is dark and it is i don't know there's something about it that yeah, just he, really really works for yeah me. he explained it very beautifully on the vice press open channel like where he was coming from in terms of like the when you see because you see only uh like a pov of the shark yeah. basically where you never see him really underwater and yeah. I think that's an interesting way of interpreting or giving it your own take on it. And I, I think he, he did yeah. it really well. I think, you know, as I was saying, for, for a, a movie which has been like thoroughly done yeah. in terms of posters, it was a really clever approach that I've not seen before. Mm -hmm. And I fully expect to see that approach ripped off for something else down the line because it's very smart yeah. and like i'm always a, i'm always a fan of like a smart idea but yeah uh, so joss great poster but uh, you also picked uh, yeah. some something else um on your list what else did I send over to you, you sent over the we buy your kids one by your friend oh yes you're right by sunny uh, exactly and biddy because it's we buy your kids it's both of them jeez yeah um yeah it's really good i i'm not a big horror movie guy mm -hmm. um just i've never been that much into horror movies yeah. and so a lot of post releases for that genre just don't really speak to me because i have no association with the, the properties mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's so good it, <laughs> i mean everything sonny and biddy do yeah. is great I, but i love their frank lloyd wright stuff they did both both years yeah. both years yeah, are amazing yeah, yeah they're just I mean, they're like, you know, like um, Phantom City, um, yeah. you know, another kind of power couple in uh, in in art. Um, yeah, we buy our kids are absolutely I, I try to, I try, both do. I try to message them. So if you if you have a better uh, connection to them, I try to get them on a podcast. I'll, um, yeah, I mean, um, hopefully Sonny and I are going to do a, um, a live draw mm. again sometime because we did one a couple of weeks ago. And we were supposed to do another one, but... I forgot, and then we've both been super busy. Um, yeah. So I hope we'll do another one. But yeah, I'll ask him. Um, that would be nice. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, Sonny's lovely, and Biddy's great as well. They're just mm. they're they're a, they're a really really lovely couple, and their work is incredible. Yep. And and they both make great work kind of on their own as well. Like you know, Sonny paints, and mm. um, Biddy does great illustrative work. And but when they come together, like absolute magic. Yeah. Like the way that they use shape and color. And, and sort of, it's kind of bold, but like subtle with the textures at the same mm. time. And like everything there. Are they, are they vector artists, by the way? Because like it always looks like that in, this, in a certain way. I've not, you know what? I've not spoken with them a lot about their actual process, but okay. I can't see how it couldn't be. 
it, it must be Vector. Mm. Um, okay, yeah. Although, so you know what? I, I thought Laurent did everything with um, Vector for the yeah. longest time, and he doesn't, so what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we will we will see. We will see. I if they're gonna come yeah, on the show, yeah. I will have the process on and you can rewatch yeah. it and then Yeah. But yeah, it's um there's something I, I can't quite put my finger on it, yeah. but there's there's something the way that poster looks that is just so striking. Uh, it just kind of mm. made me sit up. And again, say so for a for a genre that yeah. I don't I don't really have any connection to, I even more so the fact it made me Perfect. interested. It made me want to own a Halloween poster. <laughs> okay, great. That's 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 a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, so with that, with the with uh, with a couple of your favorite posters as of right now, and um, what what is your like? Do you have an opinion on galleries? I mean, you you put your art out via galleries, but also or via your own. But um, in in the terms, do you collect like via galleries as well, or how how's how's um, how's your relationship with galleries? I mean, I like going to galleries. Um, <laughs> there you go. I. I, I always feel a bit weird about having my work in galleries because I don't feel like that kind of artist. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I I feel like the, the way that my work kind of sells and people appreciate it is usually when it's tied to a property that they like, mm -hmm. uh, which can sometimes be a bit frustrating because you never quite know whether people are buying stuff because it's that thing that they already like or because it's you specifically. And, like, obviously, you know, the fact that I have people who kind of follow me and contact me on social media i know that they are collectors of my work which is you know it's, it's always nice to hear mm. um but i i never sort of confident enough in my work as its own thing mm -hmm. for it to be in a gallery in the same way that you look at someone like um uh matthew woodson mm -hmm. like he has a very like he makes amazing posters and he does great advertising and editorial work but also he has a really distinctive voice to his own work and you the kind of body of stuff which is he which he's creating or that he's created over the last few years um aaron hawkey's another one as well yeah. you know he again his his work is um it almost feels like for him the personal work is the thing mm -hmm. and then the poster work is like something else that he does Uh, and I, I, I very much fall on the other side of that, which is commercial work is like what I do. And when I do personal work, I always struggle a bit. Like, I don't really know what to draw. I know mm -hmm. what I like. I know the things I'd like to draw, but I get kind of caught up in my own head and think, well, those ideas have been like done. Like I, I really, I love Woodson's, um, you know, kind of barren landscapes. Yeah. And I'd love to draw stuff like that, but there's no way I'm going to do it as good as he's doing it. And I don't think I'd be adding anything new to the, um, like the sort of collective ether of art by doing yeah, yeah, yeah. something that doesn't feel as good as something that Woodson's doing better. Um, and so, so therefore like having my work in galleries in that sense, I don't, I can't see, I don't feel like super comfortable with it. And like okay. I hope over time, like I might get more, more so because I really, I'd love to do more personal work. Um, it's just figuring out what shape personal work takes for me. Um, so yeah, but like, I mean, I like going to galleries. I like, I like seeing gallery shows. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> but you know, I don't, I don't feel a huge desire to have my work in those galleries. I mean, places like, um, spoke, yeah. I think, and, um, and bottlenecks of obviously are slightly different because their work is pop culture and mm -hmm. kind of contemporary art. So there's, they have that crossover. Like I could see my work at spoke, but not at Hashimoto because Hashimoto is, you know, straight up contemporary artists where spoke is more of a pop culture band. but i mean you you have been up there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um and you know i'm always and it look good yeah i'll always oh thank you i mean i always consider it like if someone asked me to to have work in a gallery like i'm not just going to say no on principle i'll i'll think about it but i don't mm. necessarily go out of my way to um like actively seek out those opportunities at least not at the moment i mean you know i could feel very different about it a year from yeah, now okay I think part of it is I don't I don't really have I don't find I have time to um, to really dive into personal work mm. because I'm always going 100 miles an hour on client work and yeah. so I never have that time to really find out what I what I want to do even if I even if I do want to make personal work mm. um, you know there, there's um, it feels like there's a pressure to kind of share everything you create mm. and you know a lot of the 
so I, I do the only time I draw by hand is that I I do drawing with my daughter, my oldest, because um, so when lockdown started, it was more difficult for me to see her because she lives with her mum like a mm. town over, and and um, uh, her her grandparents on my my ex wife's side and mm. were both shielding um, because they they pre existing health conditions. They didn't want to, any risk of COVID, and so yeah. we were sort of very aware of not not wanting to like accidentally spread in the thing so we didn't see i didn't see her for like a month or might be five weeks when the, it was all sort of starting to kick off over here but we mm. did like a like three three or four times a week we did like a skype drawing club where we both we'd, we'd think like what we're going to draw like we're going to draw dinosaurs or we're going to draw animals just, wearing hats just you or, two or did you have some very artsy guest friends on it no it's just two of us Okay. We were just uh, we were just sitting drawing, you know. I like my brother because um, he he draws a bit as well, so he he join in sometimes. But yeah, like we were drawing by hand, and I was drawing stuff on paper, which I haven't done for maybe ten years. Um, <laughs> That's crazy. And like I've got a stack of drawings like this big. Yeah. And you know, it, it the drawings kind of depend on what we watch. So we, um, she kind of likes princesses, yeah. and I was do, like, do you know what's do you know what's going to happen now? You you know, right? What. People are going to be like, where's that OG? I want that Matt Taylor OG princess. Put it on the store. 900 bucks. Uh, am I allowed to swear on this podcast? Uh, sure. Uh, well, they, they can fuck off. It's not for them. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for them. It's for my daughter. Yeah. And that's, and, and it's been, there's been a couple of pieces that I've posted on social media, like maybe four or five, because mm -hmm. I looked at them and I'm like, oh, that's fun. But that was quite early on, and I, the, the more I've drawn, the more I've realized that it's not it's not for sharing, it's not for anyone, it's just yeah. for us, you know. And and I think that's sort of what I want to do with personal work a bit, is to maybe mm. just do some creating for me and not worry about, uh, you know, sharing mm. it with the world. Yeah. Or, you know, the I, world, Jesus, that sounds very, very self-involved. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, putting it out there on social media. Yeah. And so, so, yeah, so personal work and gallery work, It, it might be something that I end up at, but it's certainly yeah. not. It's not like a goal. I don't feel like I need to validate my work by having it in a, mm -hmm. in a gallery. I'm pretty happy with it as it is. Mm -hmm. Speaking of your daughter's work, I mean, you gave me a piece that you put up, and that would oh. be basically my next question. What what kind of artwork did you put up? And I'm gonna pull the the unicorn magic up. <laughs> unicorn magic. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So um, she's. Uh, I mean, she's she's incredible like she's six and her drawing is absolutely blowing me away because so i um i still sort of fall into the the habit of drawing like i'm drawing comics so do everything mm -hmm. in pencil and then go over it in ink and so she's mm -hmm. copying me so she now does every drawing she would draw very delicately in pencil and then go over with like a little micron pen mm -hmm. um and she, this weekend we were just like she wanted to draw unicorns so she drew a unicorn that had mm -hmm. like a, and she was very um specific that its tail and mane are translucent so the real so the tail you can see it and she was like it's kind of like watercolor but also like it's see-through which is why you can see the leg of the unicorn through the yeah. tail so i'm looking at it now because it's on my fridge like just oh, okay yeah yeah, yeah. I, i'll, I'll um, have it up so i'll, I'll look at it too <laughs> basically yeah, okay. over there <laughs> um, and the same with the mane and so she was drawing like um I think because we, we were talking about Frozen 2 because I've got a bunch of like Disney concept art books and she was looking at yeah. that one. It has the, it seems like the it. pictures of the knock, which is kind of made of water. So she mm. wanted this unicorn to be like a water unicorn, which is why it's got like purple and blue mane and hair. Mm -hmm. And and then she she just started writing on it because like I make posters and she sees my art with posters with and my, my ex-wife is also an illustrator and she does like typography in her work. Yeah. So, so my daughter, I said my daughter, my eldest daughter, because my youngest is only two, so she's not, yeah. she's not drawing yet. Um, <laughs> not but yet. my eldest, she, um, you know, she sees the work that I do and that her mum does, mm -hmm. and you know, to her, like doing a sort of poster with mm -hmm. type on it is just like it's just what you do, you know. Yeah. Um, no but yeah, she's. Uh, I, I love her work so much. It brings me so much joy just to see her sitting down and, and drawing. She did these incredible um, spider, spider verse drawings of mm. Gwen and Peter and Miles and yeah. Spider-Man Noir, which, I mean, 
she's way better than I was at her age. Because I actually found a, an old sketchbook from when I was five, when I was yeah. clear, when I tightened up my flat. And um, just comparing what I was drawing then to what she's mm-hmm. drawing now, she's she's already getting her own little kind of style and her voice of drawing because that's cool. I just, like the way she draws eyes and, and we, so we were talking about how to draw faces yeah and um i was trying to explain to her that like you don't have to draw anything everything you could just draw the eyes and the mouth and you don't have to draw the nose every time and we would we were talking about the mm-hmm. difference between um like drawing something which you are trying to accurately represent uh, the thing that you see mm-hmm. versus like style yeah. where you can choose to draw characters with like bigger heads and bigger hands, or you can, mm-hmm. they don't have to have mouths or they can be like, and, and she's starting to understand that like wow. That's a drawing, cool. a drawing isn't just like you draw a thing as you see it. You can kind of draw the things you see in your head, not as it exists in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I showed her. I showed her Aaron Hawkey's work mm-hmm. this summer, and she loves it so much <laughs> because of all the little lines. Yeah. But we had uh, there was a couple of weeks where she was insisting we draw everything with tiny little cross hatching. Oh um, man! <laughs> and I was, I was lucky enough. I joined the, um, the the Hawkey fan Facebook group. Yeah. And I put a little shout up in there. It's like, what could you recommend as a piece um, that's suitable for a like six year old yeah. and a couple of guys on there was so kind one of them actually reached out and he sent me a couple of pieces for free yeah so she was super into aaron's work and we mm. were um yeah just doing everything with tiny little lines mm. she absolutely loves the spider verse uh, art book she'll just yeah. open it up and just like copy stuff out of it and um she really likes uh james jean's work as well because i've got all my art books are kind of uh, so the shelves that I've got in the living in my um, my kind of uh, living room, yeah. the the bigger shelves are at the bottom. So it means all my art books have to be at the bottom shelf. Yeah. So I realised pretty quickly there's no way I can stop her from getting at them. Essentially, mm. so there's a couple which are like not age appropriate, which I've sort of moved and put somewhere else in the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But she kind of has free reign to go through all of my art books and my comics. Um, we were reading. Um, there was an artist called Seth Fisher who died when he was really young mm-hmm. and he'd, he'd only done like a, a sort of a handful of comics. He did this incredible, fantastic four, an Iron Man, um, four issue mini called Big in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's with Zeb Wells wrote it. And uh, it's like Iron Man and the fantastic four fighting Kaiju. <laughs> and it's, it, it's insane. It's so colorful. And the art is, in, is beautiful and incredible. And she found that. And so, um, while me and my youngest were just like playing with Lego, she just took herself off onto the sofa and spent an hour just like reading this comic. Mm. And then at the end, she was like, "Can I take this back to mommy's house?" And I go back, and it's like, "Yeah, okay." And I mean, she's um, she's she's got really into Tara McPherson's work because I've got a couple of um, Tara's compendiums. Um, I've got a book about uh, like Chanel houses mm-hmm. and uh, osseries, so the kind of bone, the houses made out of bones. Mm. Um, and that she had that for a couple of weeks. She took so <laughs> every time she mm. goes back to her mum's, um, she'll just take like. Well, she likes taxidermy. Um, so for her, for her <laughs> oh fifth my birthday, god, I know, <laughs> I know. Like her fifth birthday last year, I bought her a taxidermy canary, which um, okay, which has to live here. Unfortunately, it can't live at her because um, she spends obviously most of her time at her mum's house, and yeah. she wants to take it back. But um, they have a cat. Oh, okay. Like, we, the we, cat attacks it. Yeah, we we can't oh put a taxidermy canary in in with a cat because otherwise, it's gonna yeah. go for it. Yeah. Um, but like for last Christmas, she asked for a. Um, we were in a, a little kind of antique shop in Brighton, and they had, uh, yeah. you know, those little anatomy models. Yeah. And um, with all the removable, like Damien Hurst did a huge one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wanted one of those, and interesting. Like, like I think at this age, like I'm not gonna deny her. Yeah. any Come on. Whatever whatever kind of weird shit she's into I'm fine like, I, was, I was playing with action figures <laughs> yeah yeah i like i, I, I think that's very cool she, she likes um disney princesses but she also has like a spider gwen doll and also a human anatomy kit and that's cool she loves drawing and like dinosaurs and archaeology yeah, and I, I have a feeling she's gonna grow up as a very cool person i hope so i mean you know her mum has got like 
great taste in uh, like interior stuff and like uh, collects you know sort of weird objects and yeah. ephemera in the same way that I do. Um, and so she's growing up in two houses that are filled with like stuff, like just. Mm-hmm. And to her, it doesn't. It's not weird stuff. It's just the stuff that mummy and daddy have dotted around the house. Mm-hmm. Um, like I've got, a, I've got a couple of the cores companions, like the twelve-inch yeah. ones, which she just plays with as dolls. And there's a bit <laughs> of me that's like, oh god, it's worth so much. But then at the same time, <laughs> what? I mean, it's, otherwise it's just yeah. sitting on my shelf. Like I'd rather she was playing. Yeah, with it's like you know, play with those. That would be also don't don't yeah. touch them. <laughs> Well, I, I made the mistake of showing her the, um, the sideshow uh, Gwen Stacy. Oh, okay. Uh, from Spider Verse, and I had to explain to her that it was very, very expensive, and mm-hmm. she kind of she she nodded, and I think she understood that we were going to get that one. Um, but luckily, they just uh, Marvel Legends have just announced. Yeah, the Hasbro doing, ones, right? They, yeah. yeah, they're doing a little six inch or a little eight inch Gwen Miles mm, and perfect. Peter. So I'm going to try and get those for her. Yeah. But yeah, yeah like, it's, it's cool. I mean, I remember my, my dad took but, me to see the Batman movie, the Tim Burton Batman movie yeah. when I was nine. Yeah. And like that had such a huge impact on like my entire life because it got me into comics and comics mm. led to me being interested in art and then art led to all of this. Yeah. So I'm not going to, you know, obviously I'm not going to let her do or watch stuff that is like wildly aged. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because... did, you, did you introduce her to the Fat Birds by Mike Mitchell? I have shown her them and she does want one. So, I know <laughs> yeah, it, I'm just biding my time. I'm waiting for the right one. There was just but, a timed edition, by the way. Oh, was there? Oh, damn it. I keep missing them. Um, I think, I, I, I don't know. I think they're still up. You can check, but. Okay, I'll have a look. Because I remember last time there was one out. I think I, was, I, I messaged Mike about whether he had a new one. He was like, yeah, there's one coming out this week. And then I promptly forgot to buy it. Um, <laughs> okay. So, I'll, I'll try and get one. But she's already got like a nice little collection of art in her room. She's got. Okay, cool. um, so she's got my um, my Little Mermaid, mm-hmm. and then she's got a little print of Aaron's. Mm-hmm. Um, she's got. Did... Uh, I've got the the Mike Mike Mitchell's Groot and Rocket um, that he did years and years ago. But yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's um, there in the so... back there. Yeah, some, somewhere there. It's hard to see, but it's yeah, there. I can see a little hint of it. So I'm, uh, that one's going up for a, um, a couple of other things. Like I got a painting from Tegan. Uh, a couple of years ago at MondoCon, mm-hmm. which um, I'm, she wants up in her room. So she's she's kind of surrounded by art and illustration. Um, and in fact, so this summer, she watched the a lot of the Studio Ghibli movies for the first time. Oh, great, Ben. Yeah, yeah, that was a real treat, watching them with her. Um, the only one we haven't watched is Mononoke, because I maintain that yeah. she's yeah. not old enough for it. Understandable, but, yeah. Uh, the thing is, though, she keeps asking, like every week, she's like, am I old enough to watch Mononoke yet? And I'm like, no and you're not going to be old enough for like another couple of years but <laughs> yeah week by week i'm getting broken down and i kind of think maybe we should just watch it and it will probably scare her but maybe yeah, she'll learn a lesson about. it is really tough yeah um but she wants me to uh to make posters for totoro ponyo and uh kiki's delivery service sure so I'm going to do those and she said, cause she knows. Just going to, just going to, you're just going to do them for like, cause I, I think spoke art has the license, don't they? Uh, I, I because don't they, know. they've, they've, they've been doing a lot of Ghibli stuff. Did yeah. You, I, need to ask, I should ask Ken about that. Well, he, he, he just brought thing. out the book, by the way. He just got the book, the, uh, my neighbor Hayao yes. with all yeah, the yeah, artwork. Yeah. It's Good. a great book. Yeah, that looks yeah. really nice. Um, cause so she, oh, hang on. So my phone's still, I got 20% battery left. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I had to plug mine in too. <laughs> yeah, I might, I might have to run off in a second, grab my charger. Yeah. Oh, in fact, you know what? It's just here. Yeah, just, just do that, <laughs> just in case. Yeah, I'll do that now. I'll, I'll plug it in before I carry on talking, because otherwise this is going to be a really weird little, little bit of the podcast. Give me a sec. Yeah, that, that's how it is, man. I mean, we've been going on. You, you were talking. We were, I was making jokes about three hours, but we're going there, buddy. Yeah, I know. I, we can't be too much longer. It's like I'm really hungry. Um, yeah me too <laughs> so so yeah so she she knows that like her dad makes posters that that mm-hmm. is like my job um so she said can you make a ponyo poster and i was like yeah 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 and she was like but just for me i was like okay yeah. that's fine so but, you know i'll, I'll just about to ask it are there one of one of ones matt matt uh, well, taylor one of ones on the, the wall is, like um i think it was like the next week we were talking about it again and she was like i guess it's okay if you make like 10 
for your friends. <laughs> good call. Okay. She's she's a good kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it's possible I am going to, I mean, I will make them. And they're the kind of thing that I'll probably jam on social media and say, here's the thing. Because I'm, I know, I know what I'm going to do for Ponyo and um, mm-hmm. uh, Totoro, mm-hmm. just in case of drawing them, basically. Yeah. But um, I want to put them on the line because I'm quite proud of the ideas, and I think that'll be Great. cool. Yeah. But it's also going to be very difficult to say. Here is a thing you absolutely cannot have it because it's never going to exist for anyone other than. Yeah. It's difficult. Like on the one hand, I because I'm like slightly narcissistic about my work, I want to share it and like. But yeah, but I, I would say go ahead and share it. I mean, even though yeah. if it's your, if it's just for your daughter, people will love it anyway, since it's oh, great, yeah. probably great artwork. And uh, in the end, if your daughter ever wants to, like, uh, is not a fan of Totoro or Ponyo or whatever anymore, she can sell it for tons, tons, tons of money. <laughs> yeah, I feel, yeah, I guess that's true. Um, but yeah, so that's... I mean, uh, but but I like if if you can do ten for your friends. I mean, my that's one of my girlfriend's favorite movies as well, Totoro. So oh, okay, okay. <laughs> would I'll, love I'll to get her one. <laughs> I can't remember how we started talking about this. Oh, we were talking about the unicorn magic poster. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff you put up and uh, around the house. Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, that's the the most recent bit I've been yeah. on, like, put up. Um, and, and was, yeah, yeah, we we had up earlier uh, the alien, the stout alien version. Yeah, yeah, that's been up for a while. Um, I got that from Emily, who uh, is McCullum. one of the Mondo Trader. Adults. Emily McCullum. Yeah, shout out to her. Yeah, she's great. Um, she helped run my uh, booth at MondoCon last oh, okay, year, cool. um, along with Becca and her partner, whose name is I'm blanking on. Um, Richard. Could be. I, I yes. don't know the partner I as well, Richard, but I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, um, and obviously Ben as well, who was running it. So yeah, they're they're all mm. very excellent people. Um, but yeah, um, Emily sent me the alien poster for free because she got two and uh, so oh, I just gave her some postage and it was immediately up on the wall. Mm-hmm. Like, Tyler's a, a, like a an unusual artist for me in that I 100% appreciate this, the craft and his work and I think mm-hmm. he's an incredible illustrator and designer but I, I've never felt compelled to buy any of his posters before now mm-hmm. other than like I really love his gig posters yeah. and I, I love Akira but other than that, I it's hard. It's, it's a, I feel like a lot of the discourse around posters is either like it's great or it sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, especially you know online, and there never seems to be that kind of level of I appreciate that it's brilliant. It's just not for me. Yeah, and that's kind of how I mm-hmm. felt. That's how I feel about a lot of um, Aaron Hawkins' work as well. Like it blows my mind technically. And I think he's an incredible artist, but like until my daughter got into his work, I, I never felt compelled to, to want to own any of his pieces. Mm. And um, I, that's, that's, I think that I think that goes along with this, this the same thing we said earlier uh, about Killian Ang. I mean, he's a great artist, and what he does is great, yeah. but it's just not f- fitting for me. And for others, it does, you know. Or yeah. or when you look at, for example, uh, other stuff we talked about, like having a regular version and a variant version. For some people, the regular version is the b- better mm-hmm. one, and for others, the variant version. So it's totally yeah, fine to right. have opinions, but it's not bad and it's not good. It's not binary thinking here. So yeah, yeah, and it's it's very difficult, especially you know I've got into conversations online. It's 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 quite difficult to convey nuance in a Facebook post, and mm. you know I I never want to wade in and say eh, I'm not that big a fan of Tyler's work because it's yeah. not as simple as that. It's not just that I'm not a fan because I am. It's just in terms of something I want to put up on my wall. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not there. But like I love the fact it's online and I can look at it all the time. Yeah. Um, and the same with Aaron's work. I'd be I'd be very inclined to buy a book of Aaron's work, but I'm not sure whether I'd buy a print of it. Yeah, but, I, I totally understand what he's saying. Yeah. I uh, the sad thing, uh, the 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 first print that I could actually get from Akiko is uh, her possessor mm-hmm. print that just came out with Mondo. And it's still available, by the way. People, people sleeping on her. And I was like, the other day, I was like messaging, uh, um, "Hey, uh, uh, there's this this print here. I really like this one." And he was like, "Oh yeah, this 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 new artist. Yeah, she she, she seems cool though." And I was like, "What? Are you sleeping, bro? She's been on for yeah. for 15 years or whatever, so long." Yeah. And I I, I I told him that uh, the new podcast is coming out, and she's gonna be the next one, I think, after you on December 9th. That's oh, that's great. when her I'm podcast is going to come out. Listen to that. Yeah, yeah, she, that was incredible. Yeah, she's such uh, a beautiful person, and in both ways, 
good looking yeah, and such a nice, interesting one person. Of, uh, you've actually reminded me, one of the things that always makes me laugh about the kind of poster scene is that, um, and actually something I've noticed in the baseball cards scene yeah. is that because people are very focused on the, the artists who exist in that, mm. that scene already, when someone new comes in, they are automatically defined as new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's weird, right? <laughs> Yeah, even though, like, I remember when Rory first, I think Rory and I are about the same age. Yeah. And I've been aware of Rory's work for a good long while because he mm -hmm. does, he's, he used to do great editorial stuff, um, which I don't think he does as much of anymore. Um, but I remember when he first, like, did a poster for Mondo, mm -hmm. and like, oh, a hot new artist, Rory Kurtz. I'm like, Rory's actually been around for a while and he's been pretty successful, like, in yeah. his own right as exactly, an illustrator. Right? They, they just um, they just have this like this like this view like a horse you know I don't know what was it called in English I don't yeah. know but you know what I'm talking about right like, I got I got into a bit of a disagreement um, when I was talking to some um, baseball card collectors um, I won't get into the whys of it but they were like you know you should be grateful for tops for like boosting your profile or like you know introducing you to like this audience I'm like and you were like I mean, lol yeah, I'm, I'm I'm super grateful for being involved in this project but that's not why like. Yeah. I was just doing all right beforehand and I hope I'll do all right again in the future. Mm -hmm. Like just because I'm new to you, that does not mean I'm new. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And I, and I think, I th I'm not sure if that's true of like lots of fandoms. But I think it happens. Or, I mean, you know, I, under, I, I understand that people have like maybe uh, a different understanding in terms of uh, that, that they, that they don't know about it and that it's mm. new to them. But uh, if, yes. if you're like, oh, that, that's interesting. Let me check out the other stuff she, like she did before, for example. That, and I think that's the yeah. way to, to, to do it, you know? Uh, like broaden your horizon, also, broaden your horizon. Yeah. Also, I mean, also I feel like kind of like a dick complaining about that because, you know, I, my whole job is drawing and obviously I'm going to be aware of other artists because it's something that I enjoy and I love. And I shouldn't judge someone else because they haven't heard of artist a who happens to be amazing but hasn't done a poster until like right now yeah um yeah but it's but it's I, still I just find it funny when it's, uh, yeah it is funny i uh, but still you know yeah. you don't have to you don't have to feel stupid about it because like it's it's i think it's on their on their end that hey mm -hmm. do the work do the research check it out and don't just yeah. say stupid things that you don't know anything about yeah. But like you're saying, it's also nice that, you know, you discover new artists and then you can like explore their whole catalogue. Like I'm I am very on board for people like discovering Akiko's work now mm -hmm. and like being able to yeah. go into her back catalogue because it's incredible. I know. I, I told them, I told all the people, hey, check out the books, uh, the, 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 her book that came yeah. out, Akiko Matic, great books, unbel yeah. unbelievable, like in terms of design. And when you look at it, it's just incredible. Yeah. 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 It's uh, it's a funny it's a funny little scene, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so I was wondering how you. Uh, I mean, we talked about like the in the Palm Springs podcast. We talked about uh, how you create a poster and what's your kind of general process. But I wanted to take a look at um, where does it all take place. <laughs> so. Oh, have you got photos of my desk? You, you get, I, yeah, I got, I got one, I got the workspace that you, I think you're sitting, are you sitting on that run right now? That's, that's, that's the living room. That's somewhere else, right? Yeah, that's um, that's up that way mm -hmm. um, in my lounge, yeah. uh, which is where I work most of the time. I'm in the kitchen at the moment, mm -hmm. which is the best, as, as we discussed when we were setting up, yeah. like, the light in my room, in my living room. Well, the thing is, the light in my living room is great for drawing because it's very bright. Yeah. However, it makes recording in there really difficult because there is light coming in from every mm -hmm. angle. Um, is is that, is that your, the, the whole the setup you have there? Are you, the people can see now that your computer, your uh, is it a MacBook? Yeah, it's a MacBook, right? Yeah. Yeah. And your Wacom is it a Wacom or Cintiq? Yes. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's basically it. That's all I have. Uh, it's um, obviously at the moment I'm working at home because um, COVID means that the uh, the kind of co working mm -hmm. office space that I was spending time in okay. is closed and I can't work there. Mm -hmm. um, I used to, when my, um, my ex-wife and I were together, I used to have a studio at the bottom of the garden that I worked in. But honestly, like over the years, my workspace has kind of got smaller and smaller to the point where it's like super mobile now. So I can basically work anywhere. Um, like I can fit my whole studio setup in my backpack. Um, so like when I was out in Austin, I could go and work at the Mondo offices and it would basically be exactly the same arrangement of MacBook, mm -hmm. tablet, mug of coffee and that's basically it that's all of that's all i have there mm -hmm. um in fact for a while when i was like very very in between studios i was using my ipad 
Pro and the Apple Stylus instead of a Wacom. Yeah, okay. Um, and in fact, the only reason I stopped doing that was, uh, I think it was Endgame. Um, yeah, as so I was doing Endgame, mm-hmm. Endgame basically killed my laptop because the file was to be yeah, so big yeah, my okay. laptop was so old yeah. that I, I cracked and I bought my new MacBook and at the same time I was like you know what I should get myself a proper tablet yeah. because it's taking so long like stuff like rotating canvases was mm. just well, you could feel it dragging mm-hmm. I, I, I've seen a couple more people now working with the Surface like the, the, the Surface mm. Studio which has like the 24 yeah. 7 inch or whatever big screen it is as a touch screen and yeah. like Version and drawing board. I think that's that was really interesting. It's to see. nice, but I don't like Windows. Unfortunately, oh, okay. I don't like Windows operating system. So Fair I'm enough. so so in the hole on Macs now that it just it feels weird. And I I like I didn't want to have like a whole another bit of kit mm. basically. Um, even though it is more mobile, I just I like I like the setup of my laptop and my tablet yeah. separate so that I can do kind of two things at once. Yeah. Um, and with the with the screen size, I mean, I've only got a 13, 13 is it thirteen or no, no? Yeah, I've only got thirteen inch um, Wacom tablet mm. because it doesn't need to be any bigger. I don't right. think I've, okay. I used yeah. to have a twenty twenty four, I think, and I found that I only used like a little square in the yeah. middle of it. Okay, interesting. Um, <laughs> and, and also, I find that if I have too much space, it's quite easy to get really lost in details. Oh, okay. Like really focus in on a little little bit that. I don't know. It's I, I know for some artists, you know, they they need a big mm. um, canvas to work on. Me, I've always found the small. Yeah. I mean, I've only got like a um, seventeen inch MacBook and yeah, okay. a thirteen inch. Um, so I, I rarely see my work at full size. It, that's that's really interesting, that you know, looking looking at this perspective, you know, like like when when you see other. I mean, it's it's very a very mobile and very easy to use setup, but like you know, like. Mm. Because you, you would imagine, like by the range of like like the, the experiences you have and the range of posters that you made, there's like, he should have like the biggest screen and have like the craziest uh, technology, mm-hmm. but everything works fine, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's difficult, you know. I, when, I, mm-hmm. So I was using a, a 13 inch MacBook yeah. up until last year, and then moving up to the 17, I was like, oh, this is much nicer. I've got more screen to look at, but mm-hmm. I could make do with the 13 and the pinch, and it, it sort of does. It does fine. Mm. Um, I think something else I'm, I'm sort of aware of is that even though when, when I'm doing a poster, I know more people are going to see it yeah. this big than they're going to see it like this big. That is um, true indeed. So, there's, so I'll, I'll constantly be kind of looking at it at every size to make sure it works mm. on every level because I've definitely done posters which when you see them at 24 by 36, they work. But when you look at them small they don't like the thumbnails don't convey everything they can look mm. a bit kind of messy yeah i understand so, yeah so it's it's a weird balance because you know you are designing something for an output which is mm. a poster but it's also no there's only ever going to be 300 copies of that poster and the far mm. more people are going to see it as a you know 1200 pixel jpeg on yeah. their ipad or their phone um yeah it's, it's a it's a really really tough balance to strike getting that getting that right but so so using a, a smaller laptop and a smaller tablet sort of speak to that and I, mm-hmm. I tend to look at it smaller rather than actually looking at it at print size yeah okay um what i want to work uh, what, like, what i want to talk about now is uh, your work obviously and mm-hmm. is there anything you can say i mean we heard nda oh yeah no <laughs> i would but is there anything I'm else you can talk about <laughs> Or, um, or or something you can tease. Okay, let me have a think. I'm trying to what I'm drawing at the moment. Um, I mean, so I've got a few more a few more baseball cards to finish. Like that's no yeah. no secret. Um, yeah. They're I, coming out. Um, I pulled up the Mando. You did something for. I don't know what what's going to happen with that. Oh, that that was nothing. That was just because Mandalorian started, and I wanted to do. Um, okay. I wanted to do a, a drawing of Mando. I've, I've done like a bunch of like portraits over the years, profile mm-hmm. portraits, and I just fancy doing the Mandalorian um, because it was just starting on TV and I wanted to, yeah, I hadn't okay. posted anything to Instagram. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so it's, I need. I needed, I, honestly, I needed a break from what I was drawing that day. And so I um, I just did that. It was like an hour's drawing and it, it kind of got me out of what I was doing for a bit. Okay, yeah. Um, so, I mean, obviously, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm hoping to do Wonder Woman for Mondo at some point. I'm hoping to do Black Widow for Mondo at some point. But obviously, mm-hmm. you know, depends when they're going to come out um i'm doing 
I'm doing a collaborative poster at the moment. Okay. On it, with uh, which, with um, this guy with, who's who has his initials DD. Oh no! You know what? <laughs> no, uh, no, it's not Dan. We've yeah. we've we've talked over the years about doing a collaborative piece, and mm -hmm. there is um, something specific that we talked about must be five or six years ago. Okay. And I'd still like to do it, and I, I hope Daniel still likes to do it as well. Hopefully, we'll do that one day. Yeah. Uh, the, no, the, I'm doing I'm doing a collaborative movie poster with Sham, who just oh yeah, Orange. He was yeah. he is he is in the he is in the uh, the headliner for the for the release podcast coming out mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Uh, I've I've been chatting to him for probably like four or five years, like because um, he he came to Thought Bubble every year, and I normally have a little so, chat yeah. with him there. Good, good thing that you're saying that because he was like really, really teasing. He didn't, he didn't say any names. Oh, okay. But now yeah, we know we're, more. We're, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'll tell you off, off air what it yeah, is. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're working on something now, uh, which I'm. There's no like firm deadline on it, mm -hmm. so I'm doing it around a couple other things. So it might be a minute yeah. before it's finished. But yeah, we're we're working on a collaborative piece together, which That's speaks cool. very much to both of our strengths, and yeah. I hope is going to look amazing. But we still were very. We, we we had a chat on Zoom last week where we kind of tried to work out how we're going to fit our styles together. Mm -hmm. um, but so he builds these kind of beautiful, complex frameworks. So yeah. I hope what we're doing at the moment is he's going to he's going to. Well, in fact, he has built this amazing framework, which I'm now going to start trying to slot some drawings into. And then I'm going to hand it back to him. And he's going to maybe add some more, maybe start throwing some colors on there. And then maybe I'm going to add a bit more color. We, yeah, that's. I think coloring is where where it's going to be. It might take a little bit of work now because his work is very flat. Mm -hmm. And mine is like absurdly textured to the point that it's probably too textured. So it's going to be trying yeah. to find that the balance between the two. So it doesn't just feel like here's one of Sean's amazing posters. And Matt's just like drawn some figures on it. Put like, some finishing to... touch on <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want it to feel seamless, like a like a cohesive thing, um, yeah. and also I want him to be happy with it. Like, sure, I, I I don't want to be like driving it too much. Like, I want it to feel like a properly collaborative piece. Is not... it is it for Mondo though, or uh, I can't I can't say anything. Oh, okay, about it. oh, okay, it's, okay, okay. I'm, I'm not sure. gonna I'm gonna give uh, yes yeah, for Mondo. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> hard to guess, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're we're working on a film poster thing, and yeah. or are we? No, we are. Um, it'll. It, I think it's going to look great. I'm really, I'm really, really excited. About yeah, looking it. forward and to that, man. Like I, I mean, I love, I love. I would say ninety percent of the projects I do, but I'm really excited about this one That's because cool. yeah. seeing the way that his work has developed in like the last six months or so, yeah, right, has blown my mind, and yeah. I'm hopefully I'm catching him on the way up. So that yeah. you know, like a few years from now, he won't have time to be doing like collaborations with me. He'll be on for like the next thing. <laughs> I see how it is. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm pretty hyped about that. Um, yeah, those collaborative projects are very cool. We had, for the poster posse, Dolly did this uh, campfire with original content with like monsters, like for Halloween, mm -hmm. and it was also really cool, like to work on and like a. a I, I helped come up with the idea and like a little bit of um, art direction there, but uh, it was mm -hmm. it was fun to see that that all the artists came together. I think it was like fifteen different artists in the end. Yeah, that came together that was really cool. To Collaborations see. are really a really complicated one because you yeah you I, I in weirdly like I feel that because our styles are so different, mm. it's going to work better. Like yeah. I, I I would struggle I think if I was to collaborate with someone like say Justin Erickson because mm. I feel like our styles are kind of close in the way that we paint mm. things. I don't think it it might jar because it's so close but different. Yeah. Whereas I think with Sean we bring very different things to the table, mm -hmm. and we both have, have yeah. a very specific it's about the the yin and yang basically. Into something. I think it's yeah. I mean. The alternative is that we'll try it. It doesn't work, and you never hear of it again because we both realised it was it didn't work. But fingers crossed. Yeah, I got my fingers crossed, man. I'm excited now, so that's that's really good to hear. Um, and but on after that, I'm doing uh, I'm doing a few fun things for Marvel, which uh, I can't really talk about because I haven't signed the contract on it yet. Mm -hmm. But um, some stuff like some publishing stuff for Marvel. Um, I've done a game 
with Mondo, which should be coming out next year. Like which a game is as in soon. like those board, those card games they do? Just It's just, I'm not going to say any more than it's a game. Okay, but no video game. Even, We're not talking video game here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like it's for the for like the board games. Station. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I've done some, some stuff with them, which hopefully is going to be... I think that's in for like final round of approvals. Mm. Did, did you do what? Uh, did you did you do one before the Bruce Lee one, or who no, did that? No. Somebody else did that. Oh uh, no, that was um, Oliver Barrett. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, that's right. You um, I, I did the cover to the Leonard Moulton uh, card game, which came out this summer. Mm. Uh, but yeah, this is my first like big project with Marvel uh, with uh, Marvel to about with Mondo Games, mm. um, and it's yeah, it's it's really fun. There's a lot of work. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet. I bet. Uh, but it looks great. Like I'm, I'm really hyped to, to share that. And uh, yeah, I'm trying. I don't think anything else I'm, I've got on the books I can talk about. There's, there's one like big project that. Uh, no, there's. No, I can't even. I can't even give. Okay. A yeah. Sure. Sure. We're not gonna. We're not gonna get you in trouble. Yeah. We're not gonna get you in trouble here. <laughs> uh, but you know, I've got enough, enough things to keep me busy for the next six months or so. Sounds so like nice. it. Yeah. Yeah, so luck, drawing. lockdown can come. Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've got stuff to keep me busy with, so you know, I'll just try and avoid the world outside and just yeah. you know sit and draw all day. That's right. Okay. Um, now I want to come to one of my favorite questions. I always like to ask, and I mention this always too, that I'm still working on uh, like an art book for this, but uh, um, it is the question: Which classical artist would you like to see make a film poster, and which movie or franchise would it be? Man, I've been thinking about this since you sent it to me, and I'm <laughs> I'm genuinely stumped. Um, okay, uh, let's let's define classic. Do we mean someone who works in the kind of fine art world outside of all, like movie posters? Yeah. Someone that has never done a okay, movie poster. And, uh, you could go from like f- uh, f- people. A lot of a lot of people said Cavaggio, for example. But others named. Also, we had Kandinsky yeah. on. So yeah. Um, I would like to see. Hmm, Jasper Johns. Let me. Because he's got a very graphic style, anyway. Just, and Justin uh, Johns is it right? Hmm. Yeah, Jasper Johns doing something for Kubrick. I think that'd be a good mix. How do you sp- how do I spell it? Because I'm gonna pull it up. Uh, J uh, J A S P E R. E R yeah, Johns. And Johns is J O. Got it. Got it. Got him. Got him. Got him. Oh, ah, yeah. Now, now I know. Now I know. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna look it up now as well. Yeah, Jasper Johns doing. Yeah, Jasper Johns doing Kubrick. I think would be a. a a wild choice. I think that would work work well. Um, if we're going on artists who are dead, like Andy Warhol doing anything for anyone, I'd love, I'd love an Andy Warhol. <laughs> but yeah, you, you, you picked Jasper John, so here's the, here's the catch now. Um, I always like all, all the artists so far that I proposed this, they all committed, so you have to too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, you, if, if this art book is going to happen, you will have to do Jasper John's doing, what did you say? A Kubrick movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you have to do in his style. You try okay. to try to try to do that. <laughs> yeah, I think that feels achievable. Oh God, I'm so good. okay. So I almost said, um, in fact, one of the uh, you know you said the questions about art I've got up in my house. Mm. Um, like my, my almost favorite artist of all time is uh, Chuck Close. Mm-hmm. Who I just um, I finally put my Chuck Close print up on the wall recently. The, po- the portrait one is Close. it the portrait one? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'd, I'd love to see a Chuck Close um, movie poster, but good lord, I'm very glad I didn't say that just now because. <laughs> I would not do well having to draw in the style of Chuck Close. Yeah, I think Oliver Barrett. He he made it like he he was like really easy. I, I forgot who it was. I, I I still need to look it up. I always like forget it, but it's like <laughs> some cubist some cubist painter, some Kandinsky type of painter. Oh, okay. And he said that, and to do he he will he's gonna do Mad Max. Oh, nice! Bunch okay. of bunch of brown yeah. squares everywhere. <laughs> That's the Mad Max poster. I'm quite a big fan of abstract expressionism. Yeah. Um, so yeah, abstract art gets uh, gets my vote a lot of the days, and kind of like um, yeah, kind of Russian constructivist art as well. Yeah. It, anything which isn't too figurative. I, I, I mean, part of the reason I like it is because it's so different from anything I do. Mm-hmm. That it just I find that it kind of inspires me in a different way because it's such a a radically different way of creating mm-hmm. a piece mm-hmm. of art. 
And so I, whenever I go, like, there was a big abstract, abstract expressionism show at the Royal Academy in London a couple of years ago, and I came back from that just buzzing. Yeah. So I've seen all of these great kind of abstract ideas that communicate things in a way that, like, the only way my brain would do it is like, oh, you want to have like a figure in a landscape doing a thing, and you look at these pieces which are just like color and form and shape and somehow communicate the same mm. mood or emotion. And you think, okay, why, why couldn't I do that on a movie poster? Why does my poster have to have all of these intricate moving parts? Why can it not be like a splash of color and a triangle and some texture and some interest, you know, and obviously the reason for that is you can't it's, have like a black widow poster, which is just like a triangle and a splash of paint, yeah. but it's too artsy. And people take, don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then you can you can take an element of that, and that can become yeah. like your frame that you build an illustration into. Um, and in fact, you know that's what I'm excited about working with with Sean is that you know he has this beautiful kind of geometry to his work, mm. and it's going to be about trying to figure out how to get my drawings into these shapes that he's created. Yeah, then and it, yeah, it's, you will definitely get a kick yeah. out of the out of the out of the podcast then tonight. Like look and like if you watch the part with him like explaining. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Alrighty. Um, so before we're gonna go, um, I want you mm -hmm. to give some tips for beginners in terms of hardware, software, utensils, social media, whatever. Oh. If you have like, you don't have to go yeah. overboard, but if you have um, a good tip, maybe. I mean, okay. it's it's I mean, been it's been said like a lot of times. Social media, yeah, promote your work. We did that through the podcast yeah. as well. Yeah, but yeah, 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 some so maybe something that's not so obvious. Um. I think the so everyone gets asked like what brushes do you use and then there's this kind of two ways to respond it either you go I'm not telling you because I want them to be my secret mm. or or it's Kyle's um, or like you know you're super open about everything and then it's like you know why are artists being a dick and not not sharing the information and I kind of fall halfway between those which is okay so I mean I use Kyle's Photoshop brushes just like everyone does mm -hmm. and I use basically four specific brushes which I kind of tailored and tweaked mm -hmm. um, because those four sort of are now the language of how I work and it's very easy to get hung up on trying to replicate a certain look um, and I think that's fine when you're starting but you need to it, it's good to find your own voice to just sort of play really like try stuff and get it wrong and but work out why it's getting why you're doing why it feels wrong and then figure out how to change it if that makes sense um and like the best advice you can give to new artists is just to draw just like draw as much as you can and like it it won't like even my daughter like she'll draw pictures and she'll she either won't let me look at them because they're not like right Or she'll get halfway through and just go, no, this isn't working. She'll just put it to one side and start again another piece. Mm. And I think that's a pretty good um, that's a pretty good way to approach things. Like not not to be precious about stuff and just just draw and draw and draw and draw. Put in the ten thousand hours. Um, and actually, we were talking about social media. I think, like we were saying earlier, you don't have to share everything because once you share it, it's out there. And so curate a bit if you want you know um draw just for you and then when you've got like a volume of stuff look at it and think okay what's working here what do i want to pursue a bit further um i never quite know where to come down on the on the side of having like a definable how important it is to have like a definable style like because in some ways that can um it can kind of trap you if you feel like i've got to do everything in this one way because this is the way i've decided to work mm. But then on the other hand, if you're too broad, it can make it very difficult for an art director to look at you and get a real sense of who you are and what kind of work you can make. But then I also think that comes naturally. Like, I tried a bunch of different things. And I still do try a bunch of different things to see what sticks. Like, my work now is way more painterly than it was, um, say, even two years ago when it was a lot more kind of like solid shapes. So... I don't feel like I'm giving good advice other than just you just you just kind of got to do it. Um, do it. Because I, I, one of the questions I get asked a lot is like, you know, how do you how do you make your art? And it's just I, I just I just paint it. Like I, I don't know how to explain how I do it other than I do it this way because I've been doing this for nearly 20 years yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for all the people who want to know how Matt 
does it art look at the podcast we did for uh palm springs and yeah. he explains it very well there so yeah i think that's, that's, I think that's a, a better breakdown of, of my actual yeah. process but um exactly. yeah just just make make art that makes you happy i think yeah is is a good you know if you're if you're not enjoying what you're drawing then it's the same with, doing with, something with any work because i could I think so, yeah. But I mean, especially like creative industries. Like I'm, I consider myself yeah. so lucky that I get to do this every day. And pretty much every artist I know considers themselves lucky as well oh. to, to be able to like draw for a living. But if you're not enjoying it, then something has gone wrong. Like there's definitely been times where I've been hating the way I've been drawing. Mm -hmm. And at those times, I've just thought, okay, I'm going to have to try something different because if I carry on down this road, I'm going to end up hating drawing. Yeah. And I never, I never want to hate drawing. I never want to just be like, oh God, I've got to do that again today. Because mm. at that point, it's like, well, why am I doing it then? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, okay, oh, uh, one last bit. <laughs> Make friends with other artists. When Always you can. helps. Like, find your peers. Reach out to people on Twitter and Instagram. Like, yep. Um, I, I mean, I reached out to uh, Toma Hanuka mm -hmm. because I, I love his work, and he replied to me. <gasps> And, and he knew who I was and he liked some of my posters and that blew my mind because Tom is like a proper artist, you know, he's incredible. And the fact that he like gave a bit of time to reply to me and Paul Pope was another one, someone who's a comic artist whose work I absolutely adored. And like, I reached out to him and asked him a few questions about stuff. Um, weirdly, like way back when um, Woodson, uh, Matthew Woodson emailed me asking for advice on something. <laughs> And that blew my mind because, like, he was an artist that I looked up to. Uh, and then I was like, oh, but you're younger than me and you've been doing this for less time? Like, I don't, but you're so good. How does that work? Um, like, I, I mean, I try to reply to, you know, DMs and Twitter messages where I can. I'm, I'm pretty crap at it because I have too much stuff, <laughs> other stuff to do. But, you know, make friends with other artists and, um, and share your work with them and get their feedback. Yeah. Because it's valuable and don't be precious about what you do like listen to listen to them, what they say i mean i have a it's, it's pretty common knowledge but like me and a bunch of the mondo artists have like a slack um chat room where we all kind yeah. of share our work and you know you post something up and like it's i i am so grateful for the fact that like rory or danger or ericsson um or like mark aspinall yeah. or we'll, we'll just um like say uh this is good but like how about you change this this bit yeah so a little bit of art directing yeah yeah you know we all we all have very different approaches to work and it's nice to be able to share that with with other artists um mm. but yeah having a community especially now when you can't have like a physical community because we can't yeah. see each other like foster that online um and you know don't you don't have to do it like publicly on twitter do it privately in chat rooms and discord channels so that you're not you know, not having like a public conversation about your work. Yeah, exactly. So that I mean, else can jump in on. No one I mean, needs to see I've, that shit. <laughs> I've done, I've done live uh, round tables. So that was always fun. Like having the artists mm. talk to each other. They always love that. But, uh, uh, also the stuff that uh, is uh, off was off air and we always had like fun yeah. talking and so that, that's it's a really good time people so it's definitely good advice so thank you for that yeah that's um, right. yeah before before we before we're gonna leave you have the chance to give some shout outs to either family friends artists whoever you want to shout out and uh, let the people know before you do that where they can find you on all the um, all the web okay well I mean I'll obviously give a shout out to my my like chat room friends who I spend a lot of time just getting ideas from um, Justin and Paige Phantom City creative are both incredibly nice people and incredible artists um, Rory Kurtz and Daniel Danger who again top of their game but also like Daniel Danger and actually um, Jason Edmiston are like the absolute knowledge when it comes to printing and you know anytime I have a query it's like okay I've got to ask one of those two guys because they, they know what's up um, Mark Aspinall, who I don't understand why he's not doing more work for everyone because he's incredible. Same goes for Jack Hughes as well. Jack is one of the best illustrators I know, like, and I don't understand why he's not doing more work for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so if any art directors are watching this, like, hire Jack and Mark because they're great. Um, other than that, like, if you follow me on Instagram and then look at who I follow, 
and those are the artists who I'm excited about because off the top of my head, like I'm, I'm struggling to remember, you know, names of who, <laughs> who's great and who I'm loving at the moment. Um, Sham, um, Erica Williams, Tegan, both do absolutely incredible work. Uh, Tracy Ching, who I've been chatting with on Instagram and Twitter a bit this year, like her works seems to have like leveled up incredibly um, and is looking so, so super good. Oliver Barrett and uh, Woodson. Um, yeah. Um, the the Mondo Crew. I don't don't forget the lot. Mondo Crew. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's kind of taken for red, but yeah, like Mondo, Mondo Crew are great. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> your family? You want to shout I'm out your family? Are they going to rewatch it? Uh, are, are your daughters going to watch this? No, no. I mean, they they they'll want to watch um, Mulan again or um, <laughs> Spider Verse, so they're, they're not going to watch this. Like, they might watch it years down the line, I guess. <laughs> but I mean, they you know they they know how important they are. They're they're, yeah. they're everything. Um, my girlfriend, who's an art director at Super Seven, is the best, and it's great to have her to bounce ideas off of and show my work to. Yeah, I mean, I'm lucky to have a lot of good friends and, you know, good artists and a good family. So perfect. Every, yeah, everyone. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out to everyone. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. And um, where can people find you? You let us let us know. Um, my portfolio is up at maxhaler.co.uk. That's kind of my kind of permanent portfolio with like the greatest hits. Uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Matt Taylor Draws. Um, which is kind of, you know, work in progress. Twitter is just going to be me reposting Carly Rae Jepsen videos and uh, stuff about politics that's making me angry. Um, I'm on Facebook, but if you if you come across me, it sounds awful to say, but I probably won't friend you because it's just friends and fam. So I, I tend to post up in places like Mondo Trader a fair bit, but a lot of people send friend requests that I never respond to and I feel bad, but it's, it's just because I like to try and keep personal and work like separate like that but yeah i mean i might reply to a message on there also apologies to everyone i'm very bad at replying to dms especially if it's from someone who i'm not already friends with because it'll just go into my general inbox and i very rarely look at it yeah i i, I know that I, i tried for a long time to get you on for the first time but then finally we, we got in touch <laughs> and i can tell i can tell you people he's very nice guy so it's not on it's it's, it's it is on him but it's not on him <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah I will say this, is if I don't reply to messages, it's never malicious. It's just yeah. because I'm really disorganized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the good thing, your prints are very organized and look very great. And a lot of people oh, appreciate you, your artwork. So it's been such a pleasure to talk to you. And I think we almost cracked the three-hour mark. We had we had a couple stops in between. So yeah. I, I, I can't tell if, it's, if, if we cracked the three-hour mark or not. But um, oh. it, it's going to get close. And, uh, okay. you, and we talked about it and you delivered. So <laughs> it's, it's definitely awesome. something. I really enjoyed this yeah. talk. And I think all the people out there uh, love your artwork and they will um, watch this episode very closely. And our next episode after that is going to be a release episode. But two weeks after that, we're going to have a Kiko Steinberg on. So definitely tune in for that. Um, Matt loves her. I love her. And oh. it's definitely something to recommend too. Everyone does. Everyone loves her. Exactly. <laughs> So thank you people for stopping by and listening to the podcast and viewing the podcast. Thank you, Matt, again for coming on and tune in to the next episode and subscribe to our podcast and also on the YouTube page or Instagram at Dropback Official and leave us comments, shout outs, questions that we should ask our artists. All right, take care, guys. Bye.